this is the Minotaur Berserker of Trog tutorial. Uh, it's kind of an intro to DCSS, how to play it, how to win it. I'm taking it very, very slow, trying to explain everything that I'm doing so that if you don't know anything about DCSS by the end of it, if you watch closely, if you watch the whole thing, then you'll have some idea of how to win a game of DCSS. So, it's been a few days since I've played, so I'm going to reacquaint myself with this character because I don't actually remember everything about it. Of course, as a berserker, it's pretty straightforward, uh, so it's kind of hard to hard to mess up, even if you even if you uh, start and then stop and then start again. Um, so what I want to do is I want to look at my equipment, and I see that uh, right, yeah, I had a fully enchanted shield, always very good. It also has a brand on it, super super good. I have some extra MR here. I have a scarf with RF plus and RC plus. We've been pretty lucky. <clears throat> now that I look at this, we've been pretty lucky as far as the equipment goes. Um, most importantly, we have this just outrageous demon blade, plus ten. Um, easily an end game weapon. Drain is kind of a bad brand for super late game, but it's quite good for the part of the game that we're in now. Uh, last time I remember we finished Lair. So once you finish Lair, you could be said to be in the mid game. Uh, you might even say that the mid game starts around Lair. Um, but now we're firmly in the mid game. And this is where the game really opens up. Like I say that you should go to Lair as soon as you find it, which is what we did last time on most characters. But after that, you actually have some choices. So I'm going to hit Control and press O to get the dungeon map, and we're going to see kind of what's available. So, um, first of all, uh, I mentioned... Hey, Brandon B3, thank you for the sub. Much appreciated, buddy. Cool stuff. How you doing, man? Um, just, uh, what's up? Just doing some tutorials. Alright, so I mentioned last time there's 15 runes of Zot, right? And if you count these, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 of them, and then there's the orb itself. You need to get three of them to be able to enter an area called Zot, where this orb is, and then the goal is to take the orb back up um, to floor 1 while demons attack you. And... Um, Technically, you only need three. Typically, if I'm playing, you know, if I'm playing to win, if I'm playing really, really optimally, I'll get about four, and I'll explain why later. Um, but if you want to really showboat, you can do 15. And there are certain parts of the game, like Pandemonium and the Hells, that's uh, Tartarus, Gehenna, Kokitas, and uh, Dis. And then there's also Tomb, which is not part of Hell. These, these parts of the game that I'm highlighting now are what's known as Extended. That is to say, they're not really part of the regular game. You don't generally go to these places unless you're trying to do what, what I would call post-game content. Um, I've got an anonymous viewer here. I better let them know that I'm streaming. In fact, why don't we just inscribe? Uh, this is not. This doesn't affect the game in any way, but I'll show you how to do it. You press I for inventory, and then you press, in this case, A, which is where my demon blade is. You can press I again to inscribe it. And I'm just going to inscribe it with my Twitch TV URL, and that'll show up right here. Anyway, um, so why was I talking about runes? Well, we're finally about to enter branches of the dungeon that have runes in them. Um, there are two, well, there are three areas in the lair that come off of the lair that have runes in them. Uh, in this case, we got Swamp, we got Snake Pit, and we got Slime Pits. Slime Pits will always be there. Swamp will sometimes not be there, and instead you'll get an area called Shoals. Snake Pit will sometimes not be there, and instead you'll get an area called the Spider Nest. But that varies every single time you play the game. Uh, this time we got Swamp and Snake Pit. Now, the general order of the game is that right about this point, most people will go and finish the dungeon, which is 15 floors, after they've finished Lair. Uh, personally... I, I do things a little differently. What I do is um, I look at my magic resistance, right? Um, now, in the case of a Berserker, you can simply up your magic resistance by two points every time, anytime you want to, with uh, this Trog's Hand ability. So it's less important for these guys, but otherwise magic resistance is really important, and I'll tell you why. Later in the dungeon, there are enemies that have really strong abilities 
that can target your MR, and if you don't have enough of it, you can simply be paralyzed and then possibly killed immediately, which is, which is no good. Um, so you really want to treat MR as one of your most important statistics. In this case, we have an awful lot of it. Um, now, I showed you in one of the last videos how to look things up. I'll show that again. Uh, we're going to look up a monster, and this is going to be this is going to be kind of your uh, your lodestar, your your divining rod on on exactly where you want to go. So we're going to do question mark slash m, and then we're going to search for uh, orc sork, short for orc sorcerer. We're going to look this guy up, and we're going to see. What's the percentage on this paralyze? Um, and around three, it gets pretty low. Um, if this reads zero percent, then you're safe to go into an area called the Orcish Mines. Um, most people tend to go in there whether they're immune to paralysis or not. Typically, I don't recommend it. So where's the Orc Mines? Um, the Orc Mines is in the dungeon anywhere from um, floor... Hmm, where... I guess we haven't found it yet. Uh, I want to say it's floor 8 to tw 9 to 12. There it is. Yeah. Or it can show up anywhere from D9 to D12. So, um, this is kind of an optional area. It doesn't have a rune, it, rune in it. Um, there's another area beneath it called the Elven Halls. And so, there's a, there's here's our choices on places we can go. We could go to Swamp. We could go to Snake. We could go to Slime, which we never want to do yet. That's actually much harder than Swamp and Snake. We could finish the dungeon, and in the process of finishing the dungeon, we could go into Orc. Um, so that's that's kind of our choices on where we want to go. And in this case, because our magic resistance is so good, um, I'm not going to go straight into a lair branch. I am going to go finish the rest of, uh, of dungeon, and I'm going to do Orc. Um, lair branches typically have less in the way of things that target your magic resistance. So while they're a little bit harder in general than the places um, like dungeon and uh, orc you know you're not you're not going to have things that paralyze you for example um, technically there's stuff in snake that can teleport you i guess but uh for the most part you're you're okay on mr in both of those places so hopefully that wasn't too confusing let's go down so we're going down into d11 and, and if you remember last time i played i had what's uh, what's called a portal vault i had the gauntlet this time, as I went down, it says you hear the roar of battle. This is another portal vault. If you recall, portal vaults are temporary. Uh, it makes a portal on the level, and you got to reach it before the thing gets, uh, gets, gets destroyed over time. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to read magic mapping. Uh, there's a bear here. Um, he can berserk. Um, that might be dangerous in an earlier portion of the game, but right now we can just tab through him. Um, as I tabbed closer to him, we had a Cyclops. Um, now these guys are actually quite dangerous. Be advised that um, while it says in the description it's able to throw boulders with fearsome accuracy, it's not really very descriptive about what that means uh, or how much damage that can do. It says you can hit for up to 35 damage. Well, large rocks, and I can look those up with question mark slash I for item, um, and then large, uh, and then I'm going to press F for large rock. Um, Oh, wow, amazing. It doesn't <laughs> it doesn't actually say what the base damage of this is. Well, it's 20. Um, I guess I can look it up with seam. Yeah, 20 damage. God, there's so many things in this game that should be revealed in-game but just aren't. Anyway, you add 20 to 35, you end up with 55 damage. So Cyclops can do 55 damage at range. This character doesn't care too much because he has a ton of hit points and he has a ton of AC and he's got a shield as well. He's very unlikely to take a bunch of damage from that. But if you were a caster at this point in the game, um, Cyclops, Cyclopes would be one of the more dangerous things that you could run into. Let's grab this wand. It's a wand to disintegrate. Uh, that turned out to be a shop. Okay, so as, I, as you recall, when I magic map, I get an idea of what the map looks like, right? Um... It's these little yellow things on the mini-map that I'm interested in. And I happen to know that because it said the Roar of Battle or whatever, that means this is a Bailey. And I happen to recognize that this is what the Bailey entrance looks like. Uh, so let's let's go into the Bailey entrance. Uh, this is a large shield. We're going to pick this up. We'll try it out later. This guy has a really good ranged attack, but we can just kind of tab him. A lot of little goblins in here. And let's go into the portal vault. All right, so once we're inside, we're not strapped for time anymore. 
Uh, we have remove curse, so I'm going to use capital W to wear. I'm going to wear the large shield, see what it is. It's just a generic large shield. Um, let's drop it. It would give me more SH. You see my SH is 25, um, but I'd rather have I'd rather have the resist. Normally I wouldn't take off and wear things next to things attacking me, but they're just kobolds. This is a bunch of easy stuff for this part of the game, so we're just going to tap through it. Now sometimes a bailey can be quite hard, depending on where you find it. Um, but we found this after doing lair, so we uh, not really not really going to have much trouble with it. Uh, I'm going to use my wand of flame to kill these guys at range. You'll notice it's creating these little steam clouds on the water, which actually do damage over time if something's inside of it. This can be really meaningful. It can actually be really, really helpful early on in the game. I'm just pressing O and tab. Um, you know what? I'm gonna flame these guys too. Okay, so this particular version of the Bailey, and there are several. Actually, hold on, let me grab this broad axe. Broad axes are probably the best weapon in the game, um, especially for a race that has really good um, axe skill, which we've already trained up. Um, the only reason I'm not using an axe already is because we found this absolutely outrageously strong demon blade. Anyway, um, all right, so this version of the Bailey has a ruined gate here. And um, this particular gate, because it's ruined, uh, they can't actually come out until I open the door. Um, inside is what you might call a boss monster. Um, this orc warlord is something you'll see a number of in the orcish mines. Uh, generally, if you find him in a bailey, it's, it's kind of early, but uh, because we've already done lair, we're going to have a pretty easy time just tabbing him, so we kill him really easily. That wouldn't necessarily be the case. An artifact buckler. All right, our inventory is really, really full, so I'm going to use an identify scroll on an amulet. It's an amulet of faith. That would let us gain piety really quickly. Um, ordinarily a really strong item, but we have Guardian Spirit, which is giving us extra hit points, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, let's try on the Buckler. Uh, it's got Regen and Slay on it. Um, I'm dropping this, and the reason is because, look at my SH. SH is 12, but if I wear the shield instead, SH goes all the way to 21. And we're not really getting anything useful out of the buckler. I mean, regen is okay, and slay is uh, is nice, but I'd rather have the resist and the extra SH. Although this, this cold resistance matters less than it ordinarily would because we already have one pip from the scarf. Found a scroll of acquirement. Found a manual of shields. Um, that's interesting. Let me drop some stuff. Well, actually, let's... Let's use acquirement. Okay, so um, in, in the trunk, in the experimental version of the game, they're actually changing scrolls of acquirement so that instead of picking uh, some kind of thing, you know, like weapon, armor, jewelry, book, whatever, it'll actually give you a list of artifacts to choose from. Um, but in this version of the game, the, the non-experimental version, it's still these little types. I'm gonna pick armor because um, I'm happy with my weapon. It's a hat. It's an artifact with int minus two, arlex, slay plus two, and synth. That's actually really, really good. I want the resistance to electricity, but my int is only four. And if I take two minus, I'm at two. If I go to if I go to stat zero, if I go to int zero, I get paralyzed and really, really bad things happen to me there. So, well, paralyzed and permanently slow. Um, okay, hold on. I have a ring of fire. If you recall, that gives me RF plus and RC minus. We're going to hit D for drop, P for the Ring of Fire. We're going to drop that um, because we're never going to need that again because our RF is already covered. Okay, we're going to grab this Manual of Shields. So the Manual of Shields... Hey, Tone. What's up, man? Thank you for the sub. Much appreciated, dude. Six months, wow. And Brandon B3 was four months. Always appreciated, man. Okay, um... I'm going to drop this Trident of Protection. I should have dropped that a while ago, probably. Okay, 
So I'm grabbing this large shield that I brought in here and I'm going to take it out because uh, because I found this manual. I should probably explain what manuals are. Let me just um, leave this place. We've already done everything. So it's just like going upstairs, uh, just the left less than symbol to leave once you're at the uh, portal. Okay, so I'm going to drop the broad axe. I'm going to drop, well, I'm not going to drop the broad axe. I'm going to drop the shield because we're not training it yet. Um, so this manual, because we found that, we're already at shields of 15, right? And that is the that is the minimum you need to be completely um, not hindered at all in your attacks, spellcasting ability, evasion, anything like that, um, while wearing a medium-sized shield, just a regular shield. For a large shield, uh, you, you, need, you need 25 skill. Um, and those values change if you're like a larger or smaller race, um, but minotaurs are considered average size. So... I found this manual, and what the manual does is it adds a temporary plus four to your aptitude, meaning that you train the skill incredibly quickly uh, for a certain amount of time, and it eventually wears off. Hey, Stormworm, how you doing? Anyway, um, we're dropping both of those, and if I decide to train shields, if I decide to go for large shields, we're going to go for, we're going to pick up this manual before we do it. Um, and this is just kind of motivation for me to maybe switch to a large shield at some point. Although I'm pretty happy with a plus five shield with a resist on it. That's quite good. Um, we're also probably going to switch to this hat with Arlek and uh, see invisible at some point. But not quite yet because number one, we're getting MR from our existing hat. And if you recall, we're going into areas where MR is really, really meaningful. Um, but at some point, I'm going to want Arlek. Uh, and because I'm a Berserker, I can use Trog's Hand whenever I want MR anyway. Alright, so I go into the shop. Um, I see that there's a file of floods here. Um, ordinarily, I would probably buy this. Uh, I might. Actually, I am going to buy the Wand of Digging. Uh, Wand of Digging lets you dig, not stone, but rock walls. Okay, so the ones that look like this. And you can always go into examination mode by pressing X, and you can press V with the targeter over whatever. Um, doesn't have to be an enemy, it could be a wall or some kind of dungeon feature, and it'll tell you exactly what it is. Um, a magical device that drills tunnels through unworked rock. Yep. How do I feel about manuals? Tonehack is asking me, how do you feel about manuals in situations where additional skill is otherwise marginal, such as when you've already reached Mendeley with a weapon type. Um, well, I wouldn't necessarily call that marginal. Typically, I will, um, if I don't have anything anything else that I really, really need to train, I will probably use those up because that's still giving me extra damage. It's still giving me extra accuracy in that case. Um, I probably wouldn't use it for a shield, um, shield skill, you know, um, if I'm not trying to go to the next level of shield, hence why I dropped the one just now. So it really depends on the skill, I guess. All right, um, until I'm not using this our poise blade again or anymore, I, I can probably drop this ring of poison resistance. So let's drop that. No reason to carry that around. We only have 52 slots in our inventory, so I'm just cleaning house a little bit. In fact, I'm going to drop the wand of flame. Um, you'll see me doing something when I drop things like wands. If I press um, above the enter key, the, the backslash, it gets me to this gets me to this menu of recognized items. You can press um, dash to get to unrecognized items so we can see the stuff that we haven't identified yet. This can give us an idea of what scrolls and potions that we uh, haven't seen yet. That can be important. Toggle back to recognized and what I'll what I'll do is if I never want to pick up something again I'll scroll down to it and I'll press like S for wand of flame and now my guy will not automatically pick up that kind of wand. Um, I don't really think I'm going to need polymorph, random effects, uh, probably can get rid of disintegrate too, but we're always we're gonna keep ice blast paralysis and slave uh, and acid because those are quite good. Um, but those other ones are less important for the part of the game that we're in. Disintegrates um, pretty great still, but I just want spots in my inventory. Just gonna tab. This might be a new enemy. Um, Cobalt Demonologist, pretty weak, but they can summon demons that can be quite strong, so just be aware. They die pretty fast, though. Uh, this closet's weak. Okay. Just gonna tab these guys. If you recall, this two-headed ogre can do something like 80 damage to us, but we don't care, because we are super defensive. Uh, Tonehack is asking me, what is the difference 
What is the difference between the different colors in the auto pickup menu? I believe one of the settings only auto pickups items until you drop them or something. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so um, pay attention to rings of strength, right? I'm gonna press L and this turns white and then it also has a minus on it. And if I press it again, it turns, um, it's still white and it has a plus on it. So if it's just gray, if it's just gray, that's the default. It will pick them up. Um, it will pick them up if you happen to have one already, I think. Um, minus, it'll never pick it up. Plus, it'll always pick it up. I think that's how that works. So I'm switching these to the ones I never want. I'm switching those to minus. Although, some of these may be impacted by your RC file as well. Uh, like, even if I... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, no, I, I explained it right. That's absolutely how it works. So if I never wanted to pick up unknown ones again, I would have to change this to minus. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to tab through, we're going to O-tab anything that looks easy. Although if you're playing carefully, you probably shouldn't um, play so fast. Hello. Is this what I think it is? Did, did Trog give me this? Ah, here we go. Trog accepts your kill. Something appears at your feet. Trog grants you a weapon. He's just given us the best axe in the game. Or one of them. Uh, although it comes with a powerful curse. Uh, an axe with a powerful curse placed upon it by one of the Lords of Pandemonium so that unsuspecting adventurers would unleash demons into the world. Beware, for it has ways of taking its wielder under its command. Alright, so this is a plus 14 broad axe of chopping with Sindh and plus fly, which means I can activate it to fly every so often, or whenever I want. Um, this is so good, we're going to use it, although it's going to require some advanced techniques. So I'm going to turn on axe training, and I'm going to... Um, actually, you know what we're going to do is we're going to put that on exclusively. And we're just going to take that to 18 now. There's our end game weapon. Um, goodbye, demon blade. Okay, so we wear it. And uh, like I said, this is a little bit of an advanced technique. Probably shouldn't use this weapon unless you really know what you're doing. Um, so the first thing that happens is it says your obsidian axe glows black for a moment. As soon as I wear it, it sticks to your hand, so it's cursed now. Uh, I'm going to uncurse it by reading remove curse. You should do that every time you wear it. Um, this way, if I need to, I can take it off when I want to. Um, this is no ordinary curse, mind you. I'm going to auto-explore until I see an enemy. All right, so I see the enemy. If I take a step anywhere and he's still around, it'll say visions of slaying the orc priest flood into your mind. So if I try to walk up, it says you cannot move away from the orc priest. If you look at my effects, it says mesm. That's short for, short for mesmerize. So basically, every time I see an enemy, I have to go straight towards it and kill it. You can imagine how dangerous this is um, because Crawl is a game that kind of wants you to be able to reset fights, right? not mindlessly move towards them. So there are a few ways out of this. One, we could teleport. Two, we could fear, use the fear scroll and make him run away from me. Once I can't see him anymore, the mesmerize effect goes off. I could use fog and uh, clear out my line of sight. Again, not seeing him, so the mesmerize goes away. Uh, or I could simply walk right up to him and uh, show him who's boss. Uh, most importantly, I could simply take the axe off, which is why we uncurse it every time we wear it, even if the curse even though the curse uh, re-ups every time we do it. Hey, Quetzalcoatl, thanks for the sub, man. I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm happy to be showing off this Mibi. And by the way, um, how are you, Malcolm? This is going to be a 15 rune run, so um, I don't usually do those, but I wanted to show off the whole game as part of the tutorial. Let's use our Identify Scrolls. At this point in the game, you should always be using them on new potions or anything that you find. Wow, Potion of Experience. Those are super rare. Let's read the other one on another Amulet. Amulet of Reflection. I really like Reflection, but um, I think I'm going to... Hmm, with only 17 magic points, that's only 17 hit points. Let's wear the Reflection. This will do two things for us, okay? And ordinarily, I would wear Guardian Spirit over this on this type of character, but we have enough hit points. Um, the Amulet of Reflection does two things. It gives you, um, depending on the bonus, it'll give you that many points of SH, which is great. Um, it also sometimes reflects ranged attacks uh, back towards the attacker. This is 
real sexy, but you should probably ignore it. What really matters is the fact that you're getting extra shield, which is wonderful. Um, it ranges anywhere from plus one to plus six, so this is a relatively high one, which is quite nice. Doesn't fog sometimes require you to reposition a tile to break line of sight? Yes. Um, I was going to explain that as soon as I needed to use it, but basically what fog does is it tries to, like let's say I used fog right here, if I was standing here, it would try to fill all the tiles around me. And so to block line of sight with fog, there has to be two, um, okay, so there has to be like two, so let's say I was here and I used fog. Um, the fog would have to fill up this tile and this tile. Um, it, there has to be two pieces of fog between you and the enemy. Um, so sometimes uh, you'll, you'll need to walk backwards through the fog, but if you're in a tight space, you know, where there's not much place for the fog clouds to go, like here, uh, there's a pretty strong chance of it just kind of immediately blocking line of sight. Um, so fog is generally not the best way to block obsidian axe. Anyway, um, we ran into this dude, this death knight. He's one of the stronger dungeon enemies, um, and the fact that we are mesmerized from our axe against him is not the best. If we look at him, first of all, you'll see a little um, red symbol in his in his tile, and it says um, reflecting injuries. That's a redimnal god ability, and basically, if I hit him, I'm going to take damage. He also has agony, a spell that cuts my hit points in half, but it's MR based, so we're just going to use Trog's hand, and now that goes to zero percent, and we're actually going to press the dot. That is to say, the uh, the wait button. We're going to wait one turn. We're waiting for... Okay, we waited for the injury mirror to end. Now we're going to swing on him. And he goes down. If I had swung on him without waiting, uh, I might have taken an awful lot of damage. I probably would have beaten him anyway, because I'm a big, strong Mibby, but nevertheless. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a shop in here with plate armor with poison resist. I'm tempted to wear that instead of my MR, but not, not yet. Um, we're going to need to cover our magic resistance a little more. So I'm doing control F dot to see what's on the floor, make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't really see anything I'm super interested in. Um, try to identify, let's identify this amulet. Amulet of the Acrobat. It's, it's a pretty good amulet if you find it early on, but I prefer reflection over it on most characters. Acrobat gives you plus 15 evasion, which is a ton, but it only gives you that evasion if your last action was moving around or doing nothing. So, it's not, not really that useful uh, compared to some other amulets. Alright, so the Orcish Mines are here. Uh, always looks like this. I said it could show up anywhere from D9 to D12. It happens to have shown up on D11. If I do question mark slash M or sork, look it up again, we see it's 2% paralysis. I feel pretty comfortable with that, if only because I can Trog's hand whenever I see one. So we're going to go down, and we're going we're to see what's going on in here. So it's going to be a bunch of orcs. Uh, on the first floor, typically, it's a bunch of easy orcs. You know, at this point, orc warriors, priests, and uh, regular orcs are basically nothing. Although, bear in mind, that smite ability on the priest can still do up to 17 damage each, so... We're just gonna take this one move at a time. You'll notice I'm getting mesmerized by different stuff. Oh, um, sometimes when you attack with the Obsidian Axe, a demon will show up and help you. Uh, very rarely it'll be hostile, so be advised that that happens. Okay, we got a unique orc. Uh, you'll see, you'll tend to see unique orcs in here. Um, orc NPCs like Nergal, which is what just showed up, or Saint uh, Roko, which is another guy that can show up. This broad has a bolt of draining, haste other, she can haste her own orcs, uh, and she can summon spectral ghostly orcs. The bolt of draining is probably the biggest thing, but we have resist negative, so I'm not too afraid of her. If I look up Nergal with the bot, with the at question mark notation, I see that her bolt of draining does 3d18 or 54 damage maximum, but you do half of that because I have R negative. We're gonna try to walk towards her. Thankfully, my axe didn't screw me over too badly, and we just slice right through. All right, so we, um, as I mentioned last last uh, session, every time you gain three levels, you get a choice of stats to gain. Um, and while you may think that intelligence is worthless for this character on account of the fact that, well, he's not casting spells, there are things that can lower your intelligence temporarily, and we really don't want to go to stat zero, so we're going to start pumping intelligence. Especially since we found that hat. 
that gives minus two. So something you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm planning for the future. I'm not just thinking about right now. And this is this is a game that really deeply, deeply rewards you um, doing things now that will help you down the line. Um, and that's a huge one, um, especially for Berserkers where your intelligence starts so low. At some point, maybe in the mid game, you kind of want to start pumping that because Man, going to stat zero and getting paralyzed and then perma slowed until you fix that is uh, not fun. All right, so Orcish Mines uh, is clear on floor one. Pretty easy usually on floor one, although sometimes you get a tough version of the floor. We did not. Um, but you'll notice something. Um, there's only two downstairs. Now, what did I say in the last couple sessions? I said that every single floor has three, three downstairs. All right, so... I'm going to magic map, and you'll notice there's a disconnected section Top of the floor. Of the month, Malcolm for Alf Chad. <laughs> there you go, Quetzalcoatl. That's a very commanding lead of one bit. All right, so we see that there's a there's a section here that's unexplored. Now I am not I am not immune to sorcerer paralyzed. So this is this is huge. Um, this is a huge piece of, of technique that I that I you got to internalize. Um, so. 1% chance to paralyze, that might not seem like much, but it is meaningful. So why am I talking about this? Before I explain that, I need to talk about a little mechanic where if I go down into a floor, okay, for the first time, I've never been to that floor before, um, every time I go in there, if I, if, it's, if I haven't been there before, I get to act before anything else gets to act. However, if I have been there before, let's say I go down into Orc 2 and then I come back up to Orc 1, I don't get that, uh, you know, wonderful uh, benefit. Instead, everything else gets to act. So if I were to come down and come back up, there could be an orc sorcerer somewhere around that staircase. He could paralyze me immediately. And if there's like a stone giant or an Etten or some big boy, even an orc warlord, he might just like beat the hell out of me until I'm dead while I'm paralyzed. Pretty lame, right? So we're going to avoid that by using our wand of digging. Capital V, hold shift and hit V for the evoke menu. Select the uh, wand and then just move the targeter where you want it to be. And so now there's there's no risk of that. We could still get, if we walked if we walked into a sorcerer, we could get paralyzed, but there would be enough distance between me and him that I'd feel much safer um, rather than just immediately being surrounded by nonsense. Now that's a pretty unlikely scenario to happen, but, uh, you know, you should still be aware of it. <laughs> I like these little friendly demons. You see the little green circles around them? That means they're my buddy. All right. Nothing on the floor I care about. Uh, Tonehex says, what is your recommended minimum in each stat to avoid stat zero? Uh, I don't really have a number that I go by, but um, five is, is where I start feeling slightly less uncomfortable, I guess. Like, I wouldn't want to wear this hat right now. Unless I really needed the RLX, because that would drop me to three. And the game even kind of warns you, because there's, there it is, it's, it's red now. Um, I think that... Okay, let's look at one of the enemies. Uh, oh god, I don't know how to spell it. Oh Jesus, somebody pounded on their keyboard to create this demon's name, and I... I'm going to have to Google this, DCSS, co sec, minor demons, DCSS. <laughs> you would think I would know how to spell this. Um, okay, there's an X in it. Okay, it's uh, N-E-Q-O-X-E-C. All right, so these are little pink dudes who can drain your intelligence at range. Um, so brain feed, let's look up the brain feed ability. That's what it's called. Succeeds one out of every three times and it, and it can drain your intelligence by 1d3 points. So typically things that drain intelligence or any other stat um, drain them 1d3 at a time. So if you, um, if you have three, that means that a single one can immediately, as soon as you see them, um, take your ass down to uh, paralyzed mode. So that's definitely not where you want to be. Okay, so I went down, I'm going to auto-explore, I'm just going to tab. Until something dangerous happens or shows up, I'm going to... Hey, there's a Nekazek right there, he's my friend. But there he is. 
Sorcerers, in fact, check this out. Orc sorcerers can summon these dudes. So you may think, you may think, well, okay, I have a million magic resistance, so I can't be paralyzed. But if you have low intelligence, they might summon, summon one of these dudes and paralyze you and kill you. People have lost even Minotaur Berserkers that way. All right, so we're in Orc 2. This particular version of Orc 2, I already recognize it. If you see these um, stone walls that are sort of dark, then you need to be aware there are actually going to be a ton of pandemonium demons in here. Um, so I need to be extra careful because uh, there may in fact be some Nekazex just sort of running around. Um, there's there's an Ice Devil right there. 16 damage hits and then an extra 24 cold. We have a lot of cold resist though, so I'm just going to tear these guys apart. Check this out. I'm going to use Trog's Hand not because I need the EMR, but because I want the regen that comes along with it. So every time I attack or every time I take a turn, I'm gaining a little bit of hit points back. Because we're actually at risk of taking a lot of damage from all these priests at the same time, so... Let's, uh... Let's make life easier for me, and make sure I'm healing a bit every turn. Also, if you see these little, um, yellow signs at the top right of the, uh, tile, you'll see that they're actually, um... It says they're unusually strong down here, right? That means that a knight or a warlord or something, um did a battle cry, and they're doing a lot of extra damage in melee. This is another demon, a Yanoxanol. They can iron shot for quite a bit of damage. A <laughs> bad beginner's guide of city and axe in Orc 2 is unrealistic. Use War Axe plus zero instead. Uh, I, I don't know if it's really un unrealistic to have a really good weapon at this point in the game under Trog, considering that he gifts weapons. Um, we'd be doing just as well if we had like a plus nine um, flaming uh, broad axe or even a war axe, I would say. Okay, Yanoxanul, their iron shot does 3d16, so 50, 50 some possible. Just gonna kill him. And we're gonna back off now because we're very hurt. I'm gonna keep backing off well into the explored areas and we're just gonna rest. UV5. I mean, I can use a plus zero war axe if you'd like me to, Muldranius. I, I assure you I would still win. I've actually thought about doing a um, a run where where the character only uses um, his starting equipment just to show that you can still win the game, even if the game is like super, super stingy with you. Okay, that was a sun demon we just killed. They can do pretty good fire damage. Um, but again, we have, we've been relatively lucky with our equipment, so, uh, with one fire resist, they're not too worried about it. This is a chaos spawn. <laughs> Malcolm would just use stat for him with that restriction. Uh, no, I mean, no, I would, I, would, I mean, that's a funny, I probably would under normal circumstances, but, um, I, I would, I would stay outside the bounds of, of cheating, I think, if I wanted to really run that challenge. Anyway, this is a Chaos Spawn. Again, you typically won't see these just chilling out on Orc 2. This is just a special layout that has this sort of pandemonium, um, kind of an evil Orc cult type type deal, type theme to it. Um, chaos Spawn's attack, and it says to cause unpredictable effects if any damage is dealt. These guys can par paralyze you or send you to the Abyss via banishment. So what you really want to do uh, is if you are a character that's not super, super strong, you want to kill them at range and not let them attack you at all. Um, but we slice the Chaos Spawn like a ripe Choco and uh, kill it immediately. They'll leave a little cloud when they die, which will do Chaos effects if you stand in it, so don't do that. Stealth only skill. Now, if you start controlling what skills I can train Muldranius, then you're, it's a completely different kind of challenge. You open a gate to pandemonium, a demon appears. Uh, I think we finally spawned an evil, a demon that's mad at me. Um, all right, so here's our first orc sorcerer. We don't want to be paralyzed, so let's go ahead and use Trog's hand. Not that he can do that with all this crap in the way, but we're just going to be careful. Okay. It's actually a lot of damage possible here. So the Bolt of Fire can do something like, I want to say it's 54 damage max. So there's a couple of things to be aware of with these Orc Sorcerers. The Paralyze is the most important thing. And then after that, you've got to be aware of the fact that the Bolt of Draining and the Bolt of Fire can both do 3d17. So not, uh, not I guess that's 51, not 54. 
Um, so 51 damage possible, but you take half of that if you have even a single pip of, of resistance. And we happen to be resisting both of those elements, negative and fire. So not really much to worry about from these dudes. We've more or less invalidated their three main abilities. And then they can summon demons, and if they summon the electric demon, then we've got a problem. But we're not going to let that happen, because instead we're just going to bust out an ice blast. Um, and then we're going to bust out a lightning rod. So I used ice blast to... That's one of my wands to hit all that crap. Now we're going to use uh, another type of evocable, capital V for evoke menu, capital M because that's where my lightning rod is. This thing typically hits. It almost never does no damage, and I don't think it can miss. Um, so we're going to use it, and it's a great way to finish off stuff that, like that orc sorcerer that we really want to dead as fast as possible. Okay. I'm going to use it one more time because it does way more damage the second time or any subsequent time after the first, if you do it in the same spot. Just to show off, if I were to do this over here, you'll notice how there's like a light yellow sort of targeting, targeter type deal. It would blast all that area if I were to do that. But instead we're gonna do it in the exact same spot for maximum damage, killing the orc warrior immediately. Okay, I'd like to back off. At this point, if I was playing safely, if I didn't have this ax on, I would simply back off, but we don't really need to. Cannot move away from the orc knight. Oh, there's one right here, okay. Okay, I'm gonna make my life a little easier by ice blasting right here, killing the orc priest and possibly the knight, but we didn't get the knight, that's okay. We'll just swing on him. I'm noticing that my regen, you know, my trog's hand is, is ending, and it's been ending for a little while. I can tell because it's darker, right? Um, why don't we refresh that just to be sure? I'm not super, you know, into saving my piety right now because first of all, there's a lot of mages in here for me to kill to raise my piety. Um, secondly, there's a lot of stuff in general for me to kill to raise my piety and it's just, it's not just that. Trog's hand takes almost none, so. All right, so we're totally safe from him even attempting to to paralyze me, although he he uh, wouldn't be able to anyway. But even if we were had less MR, this um, little demon and this knight ensure that he can't do that. Nevertheless, I'd like him to die as fast as possible. So let's lightning rod. Let's lightning rod again. It didn't kill him. Um, there's a high priest here, which is basically just like a souped up priest. He can summon demons. He can. Uh, also do the generic priest stuff. His smite doesn't do any extra damage though, so they're not really that dangerous. Just think of them as uh, harder to kill priests. Sorcerers are your real risk here. Okay, so I'm going to use Ice Blast. You'll notice if I, this targeter, if I, if I move it over to this tile over here, it hits all of this crap, so let's just do that. Nice. Okay, um, I'm just going to swing. I feel pretty confident about just tabbing into this stuff. Hello! Okay. This is the one dangerous thing that scares me a bit. So this blue guy, he does electric damage, right? And he moves really, 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 really fast. Um, hits for up to 15 damage and deals 13 extra electric damage if damage is dealt. Uh, if I hover over him, you'll notice that there's a little green thing on top of the uh, high priest. That's telling me that the high priest owns him. Now, I'd like to swing on the High Priest to kill him so that this thing disappears, so that I don't take any extra damage. Um, but I might miss. So let's do the thing that's virtually guaranteed to do damage, which is Ice Blast. Because it can't miss, right? He didn't die, which is actually very surprising. Um, I'm going to do that again. Um, this time I kind of have to hit myself, but I feel okay about that. That was extremely unlikely, by the way, for that to happen. Okay, there's one more. Fighting this whole end vault all at once. I'd like to back out and heal. Kind of move away from the high priest. Oh, I've got questions. Uh, are there any reliable ways to remove clouds like that? No. I mean, you can blow them away with something called the Fan of Gales, uh, but if, if a cloud is made by an enemy, it sticks around until a few turns until a few turns passes. Um, if it's a cloud that you made, you can just remove your line of sight to it somehow, and then the cloud will just disappear immediately. 
asking for a friend stuck in a corridor with an apocalypse crap. Well, okay, so the trick there is you want to put a cloud on yourself before the apocalypse crab breathes. If you were to read fog, the crab would not be able to create a cloud on your head. I think he can still breathe on you and hit you for one chaos effect, but the cloud would not continue to would not continue to hit. All right, we have a ton of ice blast, so I'm just going to burn some here. It's a little bit wasteful. But uh I just wanted to kill them before they had a chance to summon another six furhi. I will Trog's Hand again, because of the Sorcerer coming up. Don't want him to paralyze me. Okay. So we got kind of a funky orc too this time, because of, of all this demon stuff. You're going to find this Pandemonium Gate in this version of Orc 2. This is what you might call a noob trap. Don't go in here. This is an extended part of the game. Like I said, it's the post-game. You go in here, you're virtually guaranteed to die. Unless you're very, very high level. All right, so the reason to go to Orc um, doesn't have a rune, right? So why are we here? Are we just farming experience? No. There are always four shops in the bottom of Orc. So it's a great place to find, um, find stuff that you might need to uh, have a smooth game. If you really need some kind of resistance, you're likely to find something useful here. If you really need a certain kind of weapon, you're pretty likely to find it here, especially since the orcs drop certain weapons. Like if I really wanted a broad axe, you'll notice that one dropped here in orc 2 already. Um, speaking of which, I should drop this generic broad axe. We don't, we don't need anything. So here, here's a great example of a weapon that would have been decent to play out um, a huge amount of the rest of the game with. This is not exactly end game, but... It is plus six and it has a resistance on it, so this wouldn't have been bad to use. Um, we see that there's a ring of resist corrosion. That's going to be really important for later in the game. Um, you'll find consumables sometimes, depending on the kind of store it is, like we found Identify, some magic map, enchant weapon. Um, by the way, I can drop my enchant weapon scrolls, and I'm going to press the backslash key and make sure I don't pick up enchant weapon scrolls again. Uh, this is just a ration shop. I'm dropping enchant weapon because I have this I have this crazy axe, um, so it's very unlikely for me to need it. By the way, these demon spawn guys, you're not going to see them in orc typically. Um, they're very special enemies that usually only show up in the post game, but essentially the, the theme here is that the orcs opened up a portal to pandemonium and some stuff there came out, some of the easier enemies. Okay. Quetzalcoatl says, maybe I missed it, but could you mention why you never berserked in that fight? I did not mention that. Uh, well, I mentioned it a couple sessions ago, I guess. So I'm a berserker, right? I have all these cool abilities like berserk, and I could have even summoned an ally with brothers in arms, but um, a lot of people really rely on berserk to just slaughter everything. I almost never use it unless I absolutely have to. Uh, and the reason for that is because imagine if I had killed all the stuff in there, right? And look how... Look how many corners are in here, too. So let's say I'm, like, right here, okay? And this is where I'm fighting. And I, I berserk, I kill all the crap, and I rest. And then as soon as I rest, RNG rolls poorly for me. I get paralyzed. Some bro turns the corner and says, Oh, hey, you're paralyzed for seven turns. And just proceeds to beat the hell out of me. Um, I don't want that to happen. Uh, worst case scenario is that I die instantly from that. Because, I mean, what if it was, like, an orc sorcerer? He summons a six fur, he who then proceeds to do like, you know, 200 lightning damage to me because I'm paralyzed. So typically Berserk is not something you want to do. I hate doing things in this game that take away my ability to control my character or have a chance of taking away my ability to control my character. Everything in this game really screams at you to um, sort, of, sort of stay on top of the, the granular control of your character. And what I mean by that is... Um, an example of that is how I will only attack, you know, if I, if I swing right now, it'll, it'll say that my attack speed is 1.0, right? That's the absolute slowest I'm willing to attack typically, because that means other speed 10 enemies can hit me more than once, you know? And I want to have as granular of control of my, of my actions as possible, um, and of the enemy's actions as possible, so that I don't have anything unexpected happen uh, that kills me. We're going to pick up the Lamp of Fire. It's a really, really, really good, um, really good evocable that, like the, like most miscellaneous items, like the Lightning Rod, 
over time it recharges as I gain experience. Okay, so we finished Orc, um, and we've opened up another path, okay? So first of all, we could go into Pandemonium, but that's stupid, don't do that. There's also this thing, the staircase to the Elven Halls. Um, and while we could probably pull off doing that right now, it's extremely dangerous down there, and the easiest place to go now is either to finish the rest of Dungeon or to go into a Lair Branch. Dungeon's typically going to be easier, although it's a little more swingy. As you recall, I mentioned there can be um, there can be really high, really powerful MR threats in here. So we're going to do Dungeon, but only because we have our MR filled out. Um, I ran into a mark trap. Everything on the floor knows where I am, and I, you know you can kind of see from all this uh, horrible gurgling sounds and shouts and whatnot that they're coming to get me. So, uh oh, Mr. Hornet can kill me, and I actually can't walk away from him because of my axe. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, ice blast him, lightning rod, and he dies. You know what, typically I would take off my axe and go run to a staircase, but I think we can kill basically the whole floor all at once now that that hornet is down. I used resources against the hornet, because unlike most things, that hornet is actually quite deadly because it can paralyze you when it attacks you. You don't want hornets to be able to hit you. This is a great place for me to use my lamp of fire. I see that a five-headed hydra is coming, and I don't feel too hot about trying to kill it with the axe, because while I'll probably kill it, I'll be cutting off heads left and right. So we're going to use the lamp, which is not always super reliable, um, but in this case it went exactly where I wanted it to go. Hooray. Um, we're going to swing. We're going to swing. I'm going to order this um, Six Furhi to attack the Hydra, but it didn't quite kill it. Um, let's use a lightning rod. It won't do too much on the first blast, but basically we don't want to swing on it. Okay. Um, Okay, the flame did damage to it, and the lightning did damage to it, and it died. Yeah, this might be a really good place to use Brothers in Arms, actually, because we're marked and we're sort of trapped here. Again, I could have taken off the axe and headed for the staircase. I'm just doing this as kind of a showcase of how strong the character is. Um, the optimal thing would have been to take off the axe to end the Mesmerize effect and go to the staircase. There's another Hornet. Let's use a Brother in Arms, like uh, Quetzalcoatl suggested. I don't think we need it, but it is going to be helpful if we do get paralyzed. We're at full piety, too, so we're likely to get a really good one. We got an okay one, not the best. Uh, it's a troll. Would have preferred a deep troll, perhaps. Black bear bro. I don't think that can happen when you're at high, as high a piety as I'm at. Okay, look how almost dead this cyclops is. I am actually going to ice blast him just to get him off the table so he'll stop throwing rocks at me. So I'm not too worried about getting paralyzed right now because there's only garbage around. But if that cyclops had been around and I had been paralyzed, he could potentially cause some real big issues for me. If my troll bro wasn't here, I'd probably be berserking, or not berserking, I'd probably be, I don't know why I said that, I'd probably be using Ice Blast on myself, um, like on this sun demon, in order to hit the hornet. Um, you'll notice I'm, I only have a couple things right now that can hit this hornet, because he's behind the sun demon. We could Lightning Rod, which is not going to do too much, um, probably not going to kill him. We could Acid, which is not super likely to hit, because his evasion is pretty high. Um, but I think we are going to acid it. it. It may it may work. Okay, Bolt of Acid hits the Sun Demon. Bolt of Acid misses the Hornet. Unfortunately, he's right next to me. So what are we going to do about this? We could get paralyzed. It would be really bad if we got paralyzed. Most characters would want to use Fear here. But I feel so strong with this dude. Um... And even if I get paralyzed, my troll is likely to just slaughter anything that gets close to me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use Enslave on this Hornet. 57% chance to work, and it does work. Worst case scenario, I mean, even though this, this ugly thing that by the way can do about 17, 17 damage plus poisoning was coming, by the time it got to me, I would be unparalyzed, so it's not really a big deal. Can't move away from the Iguana, so we're going to go closer around the fire, not into the fire. Eventually, this hornet's not going to be my bro anymore. Let's order him to attack the Cyclops. I'm just going to wait and let my guys kill that stuff. I'm going to order my stuff to run away. There he is. He's next to me now. Or he's uh, hostile again now. Let's 
paralyze him. It fails, paralyze him, paralyze any. If he's by himself, the Hornet is really not deadly at all for this character because my AC is so high. That's why I'm more or less willing to fight him on his own. Although other characters are going to have a real issue. No, it's definitely piety based. Quetzalcoatl, you could be level one uh, and have, if you happen to somehow have full piety, which I guess is probably impossible at level one, um, you would still get iron trolls and stuff more likely than not. Anyway, it looks like I found Acquirement at some point. I should have used that as soon as I found it. Um, we're going to look at our stuff again, and obviously our weapon situation is covered, so let's just let's just get armor. Got a scarf. It's a repulsion field. That gives me more chance to um, get missed by ranged attacks, which is nice, especially nice for Trog Worshipper, um, since we can't get the um, Deflect Missile spell, since we can't cast spells. However, I'd rather have um, the Scarf of Resistance so as to give me this Pip of Fire Resist, which is going to be so helpful later. And maybe even now. Certainly it was helpful in the Orc Mines, where we could have gotten bolted. It's helpful against this guy. Um, this Deep Elf Mage, you're going to see a lot of these dudes in the Elven Halls. They also can show up in Dungeon. You'll notice they have about 1 billion um, types of books that they can have. Once he starts casting spells, we'll find out which one. Uh, assume these guys can do about, I think, 45 damage to you with with their various damage spells. Um, yeah, 3D, 3D17, so more like, more like 51, I guess. Um, yeah, 51. And it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, energy resistance based damage, so fire, um, thoracicles partially cold resist, bolts is entirely cold resist, Lightning is electric resist. So um, if you don't have many resistances, you can expect to take a lot of damage from them. This is your bread and butter sort of basic enemy from Deep Elf um, Elven Halls. However, we have all the resistances that we would want against them, except for Aralek. So unless he happens to be the lightning bolt guy, it's not too worrying. It's not worrying in general because uh, we have so much hit points and he was alone. All right. Let's continue. Wyverns are not scary for this guy. Vampires can be a really dangerous early game enemy because they have confuse and can permanently confuse you. They can just kind of keep doing it. Uh, we have enough MR that we're immune to it and uh, he has vampiric draining as well and invisibility so he can be super annoying to kill. Our dude's just going to bowl over him but they can show up about the same time that you find the lair, right? So something to be careful about. If you see one, a silent scroll will stop him from casting his spells. Um, a holy word scroll will kill one almost instantly. Profound of Annihilator, oh no. These ugly things, you'll notice they're changing color. Depending on the color, they do different things. This is also a relatively dangerous early game enemy. Um, they can show up again around the time of Lair. They move, they move fast. Um, they don't attack fast, but they move fast, so they, they can pretty much chase you down. Um, we are strong enough to tab them for the most part, as you can see. But they represent a huge early game threat for many, many characters, even a, even a huge mid game threat. Uh, one of their weaknesses is that they lack magic resistance, so you can use paralysis and enslave on them pretty easily. Again, we're just kind of just kind of tabbing everything. Just rolling through these these dungeon floors because this character happens to have the power to do that. When I when I play a more difficult type of character, you're gonna see me slowing down through areas like this a little bit more. Okay. This is a special vault that leads to the vault, which is a, an actual branch of the of the dungeon. I know the name is probably a little confusing considering I'm calling these fixed dungeon sort of fixtures. Um, oh, identify Amulet of Harm. Never use Amulet of Harm. Yeah, the, the little fixed areas of the dungeon are called vaults, but then there's also this actual branch called the vaults. This has a rune in it, the silver rune of Zot. If I try to go in, it says you need a rune to enter this place. It's rune locked. Um, you'll notice I picked up this large shield and wore it, but it's just a plus two large shield. It doesn't have a brand, so or a resistance rather, so I don't uh, I don't care. 
I'm gonna keep the plus five shield of uh, cold resist. All right, I'm just gonna rush through the rest of these floors. These particular ugly things are white and red. The red ones do fire damage. The, the white ones do cold damage. A lot of it, 36 extra cold damage or fire damage. So luckily we've got we've got resist. So these guys are not very scary. Although they would be if we didn't have resistance. It's cool that we get to fight them in a the hallway. Even though the axe does hit multiple things at once, that doesn't mean that we want to be surrounded by dudes. Typically you would like to pull things back to hallways if you can. So I mentioned that there are 15 floors um, to the dungeon, right? This is the last one. So you don't have to worry about being shafted on this floor. Uh, this is interesting. This Freezing Wraith can be one of the more dangerous um, early game threats if they show up earlier than they should. It does a ton of cold damage, um, and it can slow you when it attacks you. If you see one of those, you may need to teleport, depending on how strong your character is in the early game. Speaking of teleport, let's buy that. Let's buy Scroll of Fog. Found the shop here. Um, let's buy Vulnerability. In fact, why don't we buy Random Uselessness and Torment as well, just, just to identify them. We're actually going to drop Torment. Torment will half your hit points and the hit points of every other living thing on the screen. Uh, there's no real reason for us to carry that around, although undead species are immune to that. And so you may want to carry those around on like a mummy or a vampire or something. Okay, a shop that has basic armor that we don't care about. Some slime creatures. Um, necrophages can rot your hit points. That means you would have to um, heal with a potion or something to get your max hit points back. Although we killed them so fast it didn't happen. Um, here's an interesting threat. Phantasmal Warriors, this is huge. This will kill you. Um, they do a ton of damage, for first of all, 39. But more importantly, if they hit you, they can have your magic resistance. So they'll often spawn with, um, in sort of a combo, like a wombo combo, they'll have something called a Vampire Knight, not to be confused with a vampire next to them. Uh, didn't have one this time, but in other places of the game, they will, they will show up with that. Um, the Vampire Knight's able to paralyze you. So they'll hit you, they'll have your MR, then you'll get paralyzed, then you'll die. So... Requires some finesse, perhaps, to, to take them out without risk. Tingu Conjurers are a relatively early game enemy, or at least they can show up in the early game, but they'll usually at least start showing up by the end of the dungeon. Uh, if we look them up, we see that they do um, like 3d14 damage, for example, with Bolt of Lightning. So what you really want to be worried about are the Tingu Reavers, which share um, a very similar sprite with the Tengu Conjurer. They do way more damage. There's also Tengu Warriors, which are just, you know, fast moving melee guys. This character bowls over all of it. Uh, the Ring of Sea Invisible. Huh. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna buy that. Whoa, I did not mean to buy both of those. Did I just buy, did I just buy both of those? Holy shit. <laughs> okay, that was a waste of money. <laughs> We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. I accidentally held shift and put it on my shopping list and bought both. Whoops, let's identify this amulet. It's magic regen, we don't need it. Okay, so if I do control F, synv, we can look at all the synv available. Um, oh, actually I shouldn't have bought either of those. I forgot, my axe gives me synv. Okay, mistakes were made, that's okay. This character can afford to make mistakes like that. Also, you typically end up with more gold than you need anyway, so I'm not too concerned. We just we did just waste about 500 gold though. Uh, just wasn't paying attention. No, oh, I shouldn't have tapped that. I should have um, used Trog's hand. I think I just dropped my yeah, I dropped my potions of resistance accidentally. Okay. Fog curing. Buy both of those. Okay, so this little um, vault, you'll see something like this typically on almost every single D15. It'll be some weird little area like this, kind of enclosed, and this is where the entrance to the depths is. This is where the dungeon ends, so to speak, and there will typically be really strong 
mages of some sort in here. So this is an ogre mage. Um, he has the ability to paralyze me, maybe. Um, just like orc sorcerers, although a little bit stronger. So let's trox hand, like I should have done, against the against the orc sorcerer. Got him. Okay, I see I have a uh, spam bot here. I wonder wonder how to ban him. Um, TPC. User you're trying to ban doesn't exist. User you're trying to ban doesn't exist. Oh, it's an 81. Click on his name and ban. See, when I click on his name, oh, there is a symbol. I don't have to type slash ban. I was typing slash ban, but I was horribly misreading his uh, name. You'd think Twitch would take a break from banning people for stupid reasons and uh, actually deal with spam bots on their platform, but uh, nope. Nope. Gotta, gotta, gotta have blue hair and ban people for saying naughty words. All right. Anyway, um, that is D15. Uh, we look at the items on D15, D15 by pressing Control F dot or Control F D15, D colon 15, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Technology isn't there yet. Okay, I, I tell you, I am a computer scientist, and I could, I assure you, I could build something that recognizes crap like that uh, in a millisecond and ban it. Um, it's just a matter of Twitch not caring, basically. All right, so plus two robe of the arc magi. That'd be pretty fun if we were a caster, but not nah, didn't find anything useful on this floor. Okay, so the depths, if we were to go in there, it's pretty tough in there. We shouldn't go there yet. Uh, that's one of the last places I like to go. And below the depths, that's where Zod is. So uh, that's where the end of the game is, so to speak. But we don't even have any runes yet, see? I'm getting here by um, pressing the right curly brace, like shift and then right brace, um, to see how many runes I have. I got nothing. So let's do fast travel. Let's control G. All right, now all these places are available to us. Dungeon, Temple, Lair, Swamp, Snake Pit, and so on. Um, so let's decide where we want to go. We've cleared out the Orc Mines, um, and I, I think I did an okay job of explaining why we went to Orc Mines. It's because we had enough magic resistance and ability to be totally immune to paralysis, and so it felt pretty easy um, for us to avoid dying in there. Um, likewise, same reason why we finished the dungeon. Uh, now the easiest places for us to go are your lair branches, not slime pits, but the other two. Um, in this case, we've got swamp and snake pit. And so typically when you're deciding which lair branch you want to do, you want to think about like what, what kind of abilities, what kind of stuff do I have, right? Um, what kind of resistances do I have and what kind of enemies am I likely to face? Snake and uh, spider are known as the poison branches. So typically you'd like to have our poise if you're going to go in there. If I control F our poise... I technically I could get the ring, I guess, and wear it. Um, or I could go back to wearing my demon blade, although I don't really want to, even though it's quite good. Um, swamp has uh, swamp does not really have much in the way of poison in it, although you kind of actually want to have our poise there too, because there are swamp drakes that can confuse you with mephitic cloud if you if you don't have our poise. So I tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control F our poise. And I'm going to hit F because that's where my poison resist ring is. Hit enter and we fast travel to it. Hit comma to pick up stuff off the ground. Grab it. Press capital P, shift P. Um, press capital S because that's where my poison resist ring is. We're going to wear that instead of the plus five ring of strength. We're going to drop that. Stats typically are not that important um, compared to having resists. Play defensively, not offensively. It's the best piece of advice I can give you. Um, so strength lets me basically hit harder, and if I wanted to, cast better spells, um, despite wearing heavier armor. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Uh, I just noticed there's a plate armor here. I should, I should try this on and see it could be better than my existing armor. Oh, that's plus four. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna wear the plus four plate armor. I just control F plate and notice this was in layer the whole time. I wouldn't have worn that over the MR, the plus one plate of MR, um, for the sake of doing dungeon and orc, 
But because, because I'm going to places that really don't have much in the way of MR threats, and more importantly, I am a trog guy who can turn on MR whenever I want, I'm going to go for the three, for now I'm going to go for the three more points of AC. And I could also enchant that up with my enchant armor scroll to take it to plus five, but I don't, I don't want to because it's, it's not an armor I'm going to want to wear forever because it doesn't have a brand on it and there's no way to add one. So anyway, um, now we have our poise, so that solves different kinds of threats in both Swamp and Snake Pit, but we still want to decide where to go, right? Well, Snake Pit has this enemy called a Shock Serpent, which does roughly 1 billion electric damage, and unless I put on this Ent minus 2 our elect hat, I don't have resist electricity. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Swamp. Generating dungeon, building a lair branch, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're going to have brand new enemies to deal with here. So the Swamp Drake can show up before now, but it is ubiquitous in the Swamp. They have the Noxious Cloud, which does basically nothing to you if you have our poise. If you don't, it can confuse you. Swamp Worms can harpoon shot you, pulling you to them. Um, alligators can run real fast and do a crap load of damage to you. We're pretty good to just sort of tap through this stuff. Do, do, do. Oh, shadows can do an enormous amount of damage to you if they go invisible and hit you while invisible, but we have C invisible via our axe, so that can't happen. I'm just going to kill all this stuff. We're getting um, owned. I'm going to berserk because I'm right next to a staircase, which I can go up. It was interesting that we actually had a problem there. I expected to tab through that easily. Oh, I just remembered. I <laughs> Really dumb mistake. I identified experience earlier and I didn't actually drink it because I got carried away talking. Uh, if you find a potion of experience, it's incredibly rare. You should use it immediately. Um, if you find it in the early game, you should probably dump it all into fighting just to get a bunch of hit points. If you find it in the mid of the late game, just put it wherever you want. Um, you, can, you can basically put this stuff, it's like you're back on the skill screen, right? You can put it wherever you want. Um, I'm just going to kind of, I don't want to go past 18 axis because that's the Mendeley for my weapon. So I'm just going to do, um, fighting and axes. Also gained a level from that. Cool. Now you'll notice in the swamp that there's a lot of water, right? And this slows you down. You'll move slower in it. Notice I'm moving and my speed, my last action was 1.0 go in the water, now it's 1.6. That's almost, uh, that's that's approaching twice as slow. And I can't, if I try to go into the deep water, it says, why would you want to do that? You can't do that. Um, so having some form of evocable flight, if I press A and I pressed F to start flying, and this is, I only have that because of my axe, right? It has plus five. If you have some form of evocable flight, it's really handy in here. Now I can go over this stuff for as long as the flight lasts. Um, that's a Swamp Dragon. Swamp Dragons can be a really, if you, if you get unlucky and you don't find a source of our poison, Swamp Dragons can be a really useful way to get that. Um, if you kill them, sometimes, this one didn't, but sometimes they will drop a piece of armor called Swamp Dragon Armor. Uh, if I look that up, Swamp Dragon Scales has a really good base armor rating. They're not too heavy. They're a little bit heavy, but not really. Seven encumbrance rating. Um, getting, getting a... Getting an armor like this can be really nice because it, it's a good body slot, solid, and it gives our poise. So worst case scenario, you don't have our poise by here, you really want it. You can go into the swamp and just kind of deal with not having our poise until you kill enough swamp dragons and hopefully get a swamp dragon armor. Um, we're standing in a cloud of poison gas. It's not a huge deal. He breathed that on us, but it's not a huge deal if you have our poise. If you don't have our poise, it can be a big problem. Um, you can get so poisoned that you die really quickly. Our skill training target took us to 18 axes. I have stopped again because broad axes, which is um, what the subsidian axe is, it says the weapon's minimum attack delay 0.7 is reached at skill level 18. If I train past 18, I am not attacking any faster. And while I could still do that and get some benefit out of it, damage, accuracy with axes, that kind of thing, uh, typically you just want to go to the Mendeley and stop. Because what we can get instead now is more defenses, more AC from armor, more EV from dodging, and more hit points from fighting, which is also making us do more damage and making us more accurate. Let's evoke flight so we can go onto this deep water. 
Um, these tyrant leeches are quite slow, but they move fast in the water, and they deal a ton. They hit, they hit, they hit like a truck, and they can drain your hit points. Um, but this character is, is well past the point of caring about most things in here. Uh, Bog Body is a source of elemental damage. I think the only source of elemental damage in the swamp, other than certain branch ends. Um, Bolt of Cold, if you... Unfortunately, you have to look it up with the bot because it doesn't show in game, but their Bolt of Cold does 3d14 damage. So, uh, 34, 38, 40, 42 max damage. So I kill all this stuff. Slime creatures, as you can see, can spawn in here. Um, vampire mosquitoes can spawn. They're just very fast enemies that are relatively easy to kill and are considered undead, and they can also drain your hit points when they attack you. They go down pretty fast. It's just an enemy that you can't really run away from. Okay, so Hydras are really, really common in here. We've already dealt with these in uh, Lair. I'm using a chopping weapon, but I feel pretty good about just killing this thing. Like, I'm, I cut its heads off. It started at six. Um, and I probably cut, like, two heads off. But it just didn't matter because I'm doing so much damage that I can just kill it at this point. You'll reach a point. See, look, he's got five heads now. But he's still, he's, I'm still out damage. Even though he heals every time he cuts a head off, um, nevertheless, I still am just out damaging him so quickly that he couldn't, could not withstand me. Um, and yeah, you'll reach that point on most melee characters. Not necessarily by the time you hit Swamp, but hopefully. Um, and if not, you can carry... Um, this is kind of an odd situation because I don't want to swap off the axe um, for obvious reasons. I don't, I don't want it to recurse. Um, but if I was using anything else, we would probably swap to like a mace or something to beat on the Hydra on a character like this. And then it wouldn't matter if we were strong enough to overpower it or not. Identified potions. We got potions of mutation. You'll notice they're purple. We're going to save those. We're not just going to use those. It's one of the worst mistakes you can make is to just use one randomly. We don't have any mutations yet. But if we accidentally get one, um, then we are going to use the potion of mutation, if it's a bad enough mutation, to try to remove it. I just wore an unidentified ring. It's a cursed minus three ring of evasion. So we're going to read remove curse. We're going to drop with D, capital shift P, to um, rewear our poison resist. I'm going to drop my sin ring because we're going to be in... We're going to be wearing this Obsidian Axe basically forever, so I'll have Synv forever. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go down. There are four floors to the two um, easier layer branches. So, depending on the game, it's going to be Swamp Snake or Shoals or Spider Nest. All of those have four floors. And on the fourth floor, that's known as a branch end. There are special rules about branch ends. Um, hey, let's, let's wear this ring mail. It's probably not good. Yeah, it's not good. There are special rules about branch ends. First is you cannot be shafted into a branch end. If we get shafted, such as through this shaft right here, or one that automatically affects me, I won't be sent to Swamp 4. This is to prevent you from getting dumped directly into a huge group of enemies because branch ends tend to have special themes, kind of like Orc 2, where there was the special pandemonium theme for the one that we got, and there tend to be tougher enemies in branch ends. Some are easier than others, but typically you're going to have more of a challenge. So if you're having a hard time, uh, you know, you don't get anything special for taking a rune, right? So there's nothing telling you, like, I've got to do Swamp 4 right now. So if you really, really want to play super, super, super optimally, what you might consider doing is do, like, Swamp 1, 2, 3, and then Snake 1, 2, 3. And then uh, what, what happens at that point is, you know, you just kind of skip the branch end entirely and go through the easier parts first. Um, if you've built your character correctly, this is almost never going to be necessary. It's never going to feel necessary. But there are times... Um, there are times when the game just kind of screws you on equipment. On a character like this, it's just not going to happen. Not, not unless you've really, really scuffed your character development. I berserked against this stuff. I probably shouldn't have. Getting paralyzed next to a Hydra would have been bad. Uh-oh. God, I'm glad I didn't get paralyzed there. Let's take a step back. OK. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to lamp these dudes. Okay, good. He's in fire. We're slowed right now, so our, act our actions have taken a really long time. My defenses are so good that I'm not too worried, but nevertheless, I am going to use an acid wand just to kill this thing. And he goes down. He actually attacked me, but I retaliated with my headbutt and got him. Oh, hello. This is one of the most... Actually, it's a collection of some of the most dangerous enemies in Swamp. First of all, you've got these Spriggan Riders. They are Spriggans, the little fairy dudes, who are riding um, hornets. So if you kill one, then uh, either a Spriggan will pop out sometimes, or a hornet will pop out sometimes, implying you killed either the rider or the mount. Uh, but while he's on top of it, he moves really quickly, and he does 27 damage plus a spear. Quite dangerous. Um, even more dangerous is this Thorn Hunter, who has a uh, wall of brambles, which works to either stop you from approaching him or stop you from escaping. And more importantly, the Volley of Thorns, which uh, does 3d18 damage at range. So a nice 54 damage uh, anytime he wants to is quite dangerous. Also, he attacks pretty quickly in melee. Um, he is susceptible to fire. So we're going to see how this goes. If we start taking a ton of damage in this scenario, it's it's bad enough. Oh, I'm going to fly. It's bad enough that I'll like burn a telly, but I think we're just going to slaughter this dude. These are the brambles, by the way, briar patches. They're actually helping me out in this case because the other rider can't get to me. Okay, he's dead. We'd have to attack this stuff to get through. Whoa, he's berserk. How did he get berserk? We'll look at the log here. Oh, he drank a potion. Just show him what berserking is really like. Yeah, sometimes enemies will have potions and stuff. And he used one to berserk. That's a very dangerous enemy to go berserk. If I was any character that was not like a melee superstar, if I was a caster, that would have been a great place to probably like blink away um, with the blink scroll or tally away or something. But we'll we'll see a little bit of that later, I think, on a different character. Okay, Spriggan Druid is another relatively dangerous enemy. There's a couple things they can do that you want to be aware of. They show up in Swamp really regularly. First of all, their Stone Arrow can do up to 54 damage. Quite a lot. Druids Call, they can summon animals to them uh, from elsewhere on the level. Most importantly, Awakened Forest allows them to make the trees very angry. Maybe he'll cast it. I'll probably just kill him before he gets a chance. Okay, he didn't, but if he had cast it... Um, then these trees would get a little angry face, and if you were next to them, they would do just poop loads of damage to you every turn. So you don't want to be next to trees when you're fighting druids. Also, when he dies, he mites all the animals around him. A mited hydra is no joke, because every single one of his attacks does a lot more damage. So we're going to kill him quickly with lightning rods. I let him, uh, I emptied it out on him. He managed to get one uh, attack on me, which ordinarily I would never, ever, ever let a, would let a mited hydra attack me. Um, but this guy just happens to have good enough defenses and a shield, perhaps most importantly. Uh, so I was pretty confident I'd be okay. Um, and I knew the fourth lightning rod would be really likely to kill him. It's an artifact robe here, but I don't care about that. Um, we picked up a file of floods just now. Um, this is another one of those items that is evocable. It's affected by your evocation skill, which by the way, I just forgot I should be training that. Um... You'll basically, it'll hit the enemy, sometimes it'll knock them back, um, and it'll make a certain number of water elementals based on your evocations, which uh, are very helpful allies to have. So these little evocables are, are quite nice. You'll notice that the lamp and the lightning rod are inert right now. As I gain experience, they'll become usable again. And it's not, don't worry, it's not like wasting the experience, it just happens as you gain experience. Okay. I fought that druid next to the trees, but he didn't actually use his ability, so it's not a big deal. I'm activating flight. Okay, there we go. It's another one of these very dangerous thorn hunters, but we ran into him at a very convenient type location to fight him. He was already next to me. That's a ring of magical power. I don't care about that. Okay, so one thing I want to warn you is um, if you are playing a character and you feel weak, do not feel tempted to simply dip your head into Swamp 4. You know, if you want to try to do that little trick where you don't do 
the uh, branch ends until you do the other, the other layer branch. Don't even dip your head in because you notice we're in Swamp 4. Simply going down opens me up to... Um, so there's this um, dev who keeps putting bad things into the game. His name is Ebering. Um, and when you, when you go down, uh, basically every time you reveal a tile, there's a chance for a trap to affect you. So simply dipping my head into this place could have the unfortunate side effect of teleporting my ass directly into the actual end vault, uh, which is filled with dangerous enemies. I'm going to paralyze this dude. I'm going to fail. Uh, can I survive being paralyzed here? With RC++, yeah, so we're just going to swing. Has so much ice blast, I'm going to burn one just because I can. Trying to, you know, I'm fighting multiple things at the same time anyway, so I'm trying to be next to as many of them as possible. Because um, you'll notice with my axe, I'm, you know, I swung on the drake there, but the swamp worm died, right? Because I hit multiple things around me with the axe, which is one of the reasons why axes are the best weapon in the game. Okay, um, lightning blast. I'm not going to use my ice blast here because I think we're close to the end vault. I don't want to, I don't want to make noise. Something I haven't talked about is this noise meter up here. Certain things make more noise and will draw more things to your location. Um, and what we don't want to do is fight the whole end vault at once, even on a super strong character like this. It's not advisable. Um, Notice how up here there's stone. That's a good sign there's something special going on up there. I'd like to kind of clear the rest of the floor first, so check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to enter map mode, shift X, scroll over here. I'm going to press E here and E over here. That adds exclusions, and now my character will not walk over there even during auto explore. Uh, let's make sure I'm flying. Um, you have a chance to miss if you attack while in water and you're not flying. Heads up, Malcolm, it says you're playing Into the Gungeon in the Category tab. Thank you. I forgot to fix that. I appreciate you letting me know. I will fix that. Huh, I wonder how I forgot to do that. All right, I'll fix that in the... Um, I fixed it just now, but then it'll also be in the VOD, so as soon as the video is over, I'll change that in the VOD. That's weird, because I remembered to change the name of the stream, but I didn't change the actual uh, actual game. Much appreciated for you to let me know there. Um, anyway, so uh, we explored the rest of the floor. I did that because the, the end vault is going to be more dangerous than anywhere else, really, on the floor. Oh, okay, well, we eventually found our way there anywhere, anyway. All right, so here we are. So this stone really kind of lets you know we're probably in the end vault. In this case, we're definitely in the end vault. I'm going to evoke flight. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop a might potion because I have so many. I have ten. This is going to turn me into a combat god, basically. I'm going to do enormous amounts of damage. In fact, this is part of... Berserk, why Berserk is so good, because Berserk essentially hastes and mites you and gives you some extra hit points. Um, just having might is going to let me one-shot most of this stuff. Getting a bit unlucky. Okay, I'm also going to use Trog's Hand. I should have started with that. Uh-oh, that's Lerny. Lerny is a 27-headed Hydra, and as buff as this character is, I don't want to fight Lerny. Um... I'm going to use Emulate here. Let me think about this. RF plus 60 damage per guy, half that 30 damage possible per guy. I'll probably be okay. Okay. Let's, um, that is a lot of heads. Let's, um, okay, so I used Emulation. Now this is going to explode for an absolute metric ton of damage. Here's what we're going to do is we're going to drink a Resist Potion. So the explosion starts. Uh, we're going to get intelligence. We just leveled up from that. This is looking ugly. Why don't we go ahead and read a telly? So when this starts to turn bad, we're going to be gone. Um, and check it out. We're going to use acid. 
hopefully killing this swamp dragon and exploding the rest of this as well. Okay, there he goes. Fire explosion engulfs the 27-headed Lernian Hydra. 27-headed Lernian Hydra explodes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, I only did this because I had not just RF, but RF++, making the amount of damage I take from each of these explosions really, really low. Um, nevertheless, I'm feeling a little concerned. Oh, we only have two... Hmm. Wow, we only have two heal wounds. That's very low. I don't think we've used a single one this game. That's an incredibly low amount for this point. Let's just drink a potion of curing. Just get a little bit of hit points back. Not too much. And the telly takes us to safety. Wasn't necessarily going to do that, um, but I felt pretty confident about, about dealing with that. I pressed 5 to rest, and it says you feel a bit more experienced. Something's, something's uh, fighting and dying and exploding off screen. I guess my sun demon did a little work for me. All right, so that was a very that was a very flashy way to do that vault. If you wanted to play it more safely and less flashy, um, first of all, you wouldn't be using this axe because um, being mesmerized in there was kind of bad. Uh, secondly, you would be like luring things out a little bit at a time. But as a berserker, we kind of had the luxury of doing shenanigans like that. Although I will say that that same immolation trick at range it can be 100% safe. Um, I would say we did not take a risk of dying there. Although every time you teleport at relatively low health, you, you kind of do take a bit of a risk, so... Um, with with Lurney dead, I don't think there was any chance of me just straight up dying, though. Okay, so there it is. I kind of moved maybe a little too fast for you to see it, but I did pick up the, de the decaying rune of Zot. It was uh, sitting probably right here, or maybe right there. And if I look here, you see that this is now green. It says I have it. Um, two more runes, and we can go finish the game, if we if we were so inclined. Um, there's also, I just want to draw your attention, there is a Zot Trap here. See? Zot Trap. Hello, Bacadron. How you doing, man? There's a Zot Trap here. Um, and so... These will show up typically only in, in branches with, with runes. Uh, and I guess they could show up on layer 6 as well. If I try to step into it, it'll say, do you really want to walk into the Zot Trap? Confirm with yes. No, you don't want to, because they can banish you, they can paralyze you, they can summon high-level demons on top of you, they can pull things from elsewhere on the level. These are really ugly things. And not only will they get activated if you step into them, they'll get activated if something else ally or enemy steps into them and you are nearby so um basically treat those things like cancer and stay far away wow my viewership is jumping up i i really um <laughs> i really messed up by having the stream set to gungeon accidentally instead of dcss my bad guys welcome to the stream everybody i was wondering why it was so low i was like what's what's going on all right so we're gonna go to um back to lair and so we've done we've done one of our layer branches, right? Let's do the other one now. We're going to go to Snake. But remember what I said about Snake. It has those shock serpents that can do a ton of electrical damage. So if you happen to have Arlek, and you can find out by doing Control F Arlek, it can show up on any artifact. It can show up. Um, actually, I guess it only shows up on artifacts. Yeah, there's there's no generic piece of armor that can have uh, Arlek on it. So you're looking for these white colored things. You can actually search for artifacts, by the way. Artifact. And it'll show you all the artifacts you found. Which can... Oh yeah, Staff of Air. If you find a... There are these staffs that you can uh, wear, and some of them could be Staff of Air, which will give you Arlek. Thank you, Bukadron. It slipped my mind. Unfortunately, it takes up your weapon slot, so um, it's more of like a swap item that you're wearing to just avoid dying. Uh, but if possible, you really want to wear Aralek all the time. Um, which would be a good reason to check out things like this Artifact Mace or Artifact um, Rapier or things like that. We're going to, of course, uh, wear the hat that we, that we found. This dumps our MR to only one pip, which is really, really, really bad. However, um, there's really nothing much in, in uh, Snake Pit that I... I'm afraid of MR wise. If you do control G, that's the fast travel I was talking about earlier. And I went, I clicked capital P and then enter to get to the snake pit. All right. So these green guys are the basic Nagas. They have weapons. They're just 
regular guys that can spit poison at you. If they attack you, they can constrict you, which restricts your movement. Um, Naga Mages can teleport other, 29% chance. That's something I am going to have to be somewhat careful of, at least on floor number um, four. Um, they also have Mystic Blast for, I want to say, is it 54 damage? We're going to find out. 3d13, uh, so 50, 50, um, 51 damage. Wait, am I doing the math right? 13, 30, oh, 30, 39 damage. Wow, it's way off. Um, yeah, so 40-ish damage on all of their, on their Poison Arrow and on their Mystic Blast. So these are good reasons to have our Poise, because Venom Bolt is uh, going to do half damage to you if you have our Poise. Poison Arrow, I think, is going to do three-fourths as much, uh, if I remember correctly. And, um... Spit Poison is going to do basically nothing to you. So the Mystic Blast is not reduced by anything. But um, anyway, important thing to remember is every single one of these Nagas, if they attack you, they can constrict you, which reduces your EV and stops you from moving around. Um, so try not to be in melee with them if you're a caster. You'll see Black Mamas in here. We've seen those in there already. You'll see Sharpshooters in here. They're new. Uh, my friend Blokes calls these uh, 360 no-scope aimbotters because they can attack you for a ton of damage, and they almost always hit because they cast a thing called Portal Projectile, which lets them behave a lot like um, Orc Priests, where they can just smite you and hit you despite stuff being in the way. Um, if you look at the Naga Sharpshooter, they do 17 damage, and then they'll usually have Arbalests or Longbows. Um, if I look at, I can look up Arbalest in game. So 17 plus our Arbalest. Arbalest does 18 damage. So, you know, assume these dudes are doing like 40 damage to you every single hit. They also have a hidden flag called Master Archer that makes them do a little bit more. Um, by themselves, they're not too risky, especially on a character like this. But if there was like three of those on the screen, you'd see me get a little concerned. Um, there are Salamanders. They do fire damage in addition to any other attacks that they do. Um, there's also a Salamander Mystic, has Bolt of Magma, which does some portion of it as fire damage. So there's good to have RF Plus in here. We're going to use Trog's Hand right now because we've run into Kirky, you know, from the Greek mythology. Um, spelled a bit differently, but she's got a spell called Porculator that can turn me into a pig. We've dropped the chance of that to 3% with our Trog's Hand. Uh, she has Monstrous Menagerie, which summons all sorts of nasty enemies. Um, I am concerned enough about her that we're going to use our Wand of Clouds, and that's going to have a longer range based on my evokes and spawn better clouds based on my evokes. My evoke skill is 8.3, so it should be okay. We're going to use this right on her big dumb head, and we get fire, which is fine by me. Um, and then we're going to continue to just ruin her day by lightning rotting her. And we're just going to keep it on top of her. There's a couple sharpshooters back here. And I just want to point out, like, this is where the game gets super tactical, especially for a character that's less strong than a Mibi, because now, you know, i got to really be aware of what's going on on this screen. These two sharpshooters can do damage to me at range. I could take, like, 80 damage from them. It's reduced my, my AC and my GDR, but still. Um... And then I can take damage from the Salamander, I can take damage from this Naga Warrior a little bit at range because he has, has a Glaive, which is a reach weapon. You know, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff going on here. This would be a really good opportunity to um, like leave and reset the fight if I wasn't such a powerhouse. I can go into the flames, I'm fine, I have RF. Uh-oh, taking some big damage. There's our first Shock Serpent. Um, 20... Plus 15 electric damage if in melee, but the real the real big boy boss hog attack that they have is um, their bolt of electricity, which does 3d13. Doesn't seem like that much at first um, glance, because that's only what 13, 26, 39 damage, but their speed 15, so they can do it twice when you take an action sometimes. So that's uh, 39 times two. But then also you take into account that the electrical bolt can bounce off of walls, so you're looking at a maximum of 39 times 4 damage, which suddenly is looking pretty deadly. Um, I'm going to Ice Blast these dudes. I want this I want this sh sharpshooter off the table. Oh wow, did my... Hee hee. I guess the fire killed the Shock Serpent. They also do damage to you, by the way, um, when you do damage to them. 
I don't want to hit my own. I don't want to hit my own uh, demon here. So we're gonna um, acid wand. Notice how I'm moving the targeter sort of past, so I don't hit my guy. Then we killed it. I'll just go into the fire. I would never go into the fire if I didn't have RF. We're very low on hit points. This is the kind of place where you want to stop and think, "Wow, I'm, I'm really hurt." Like this is an emergency situation because you only get, you know, YOLO. You only live once. You only have one life in, in crawl. So. You really want to be careful. You'll notice I'm almost never going below half hit points, and when I do, I'm treating it as a cause for alarm. Um, it should be a pretty rare occurrence. Um, and when I do it, it's usually a very calculated thing where I know pretty much for a fact that the fight is about to end, but you can never be 100% sure, so typically you don't, you don't want to let that happen. We're going to tap through this stuff. We found a fan of Gales, which is an evocable item I don't find to be all that useful. Um, it can blow things away from you based on your evocation skill, but typically I find that it's uh, not, not super reliable. Oh, we have a scroll of acquirement. Let's get armor. I need some good body armor. A large shield of cold resist. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. My SH is 23 with the shield. It's 27 with the large shield. Okay, I've been sold. I'm going to go pick up... I did control F manual, like this, um, hope I spelled it right, and then I pressed A, and then I went to it by pressing enter. I'm going to pick up the manual, I'm going to train shields to all the way to 25. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do that, um, like all the way to 25 on most characters, but our, our aptitude is effectively plus 6 for a while, so um, I mean, you don't, you don't have to go... You don't have to go all the way up, especially with a large shield, um, to get some good benefit out of using it, but on this character I will. We found a brand weapon scroll. Um, that's for like basic. If we had um, the plus three broad axe, for example, we wanted to attach a brand to it, we would use the brand weapon scroll, but we've got obsidian axe, so I'm pretty happy with it. I do see that Tra gave me this ruined broad axe a while ago. I'm going to pick that up just to see what it is. Anti-magic, I don't care about that. Oh crap, that recursed the Obsidian Axe. I shouldn't have done that. We'll use a Remove Curse to stop that. Bit of a waste. Okay. Come down to Snake 2. Tab through these enemies. It's not a Sharpshooter. Usually they have friends. Now, if I didn't have Arlek, you would not see me just sort of tabbing into the Shock Serpent. Extremely dangerous enemy. But with Arlek, it's easier to, to just kind of go through him, you know. There's one of those Ghost Vaults. Uh, if we XV over him, we see he's just a basic ghost with um, a weapon of flaming. So I'm going to Zerk him. One of the reasons I'm willing to Zerk here is because I'm I'm at a dead end, right? So I, I pretty much am well aware that almost it's almost impossible for something to come bother me after the Zerk ends, and I Zerked him down, he died very easily. Something interesting, by the way, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna attack here. I'm attacking at 0.7 usually, but sometimes I attack at 0.8, uh, even though the min delay is 0.7. The reason for that is because of my shield skill, so that's, that's an example of the shield skill kind of screwing me in action. Now, if this is a weaker character and I ran into all this um, all this crap here, we would probably have backed off. This is a lot of stuff. Something you need to be aware of in Snake Pit is that the Nagas are actually quite slow, just like the Naga race as uh, from a player standpoint. So you can you can kind of walk away from them pretty easily. Whoa. Okay. Um, something interesting just happened. You're probably wondering how the hell did I end up inside this enclosed little area. I auto-explored, and it says you stumble into a teleport trap, then it says you are suddenly yanked towards some nearby monsters. And extremely stupidly, it is possible to be jumped or teleported directly into, you know, one of these little wacky transporter vaults that you're not supposed to probably be able to be teleported into. So, um, yeah, about that. <laughs> All right, so the deal there is um, we're going to have to probably figure out how to get out of this. 
Guardian Serpent is a really, really dangerous enemy that can show up in Lair 6, but sh shows up regularly in Snake Pit. This has Blink, Allies, and Circling, so it can send guys just kind of to surround you. Um, this is one of the reasons I love Axis so much, because even if that happens, um, I'm just swinging and doing tons of damage to everything around me, and it's not really hurting me. Uh, Nagaraja is here. He's the most powerful Naga. Um, he's basically like a, a big boy melee combatant who also has spells. Mystic Blast for 3d19, so roughly 60 damage. Um, also, there's these Naga Warriors who can do 28 damage plus their weapon and constriction. They tend to be really hard to kill because they tend to have shields, and shields are just as good for enemies as they are for you, so expect them to live a long time. As a result, I'm going to swing on the Naga Raja first. Also, the Naga Raja, check it out, he's covered in acid because I summoned a Rust Devil, so his uh, AC is reduced to nothing. Those uh, purple snake guys, by the way, drain your mana, so watch out for that. My character doesn't care, but yours might. Okay, so we killed all that. Most characters being teleported into a situation like that, probably the first thing they'd want to do is teleport. So let's drop some stuff. Inventory's full. I guess I have an Amulet of Faith. I don't know how I picked that up. Um... I guess I'm going to drop the Hat of Magic Resist. We, we may end up in that again, I don't know. I feel pretty confident about my MR um, due to having the Trog ability. We don't want Amulet of Regen. Let's uh, make sure we don't pick that up again. Okay, so this is a what's called an Unrand, um, an Unrand artifact. Most artifacts are totally random, right? But Unrands are uh, basically what you've got is um, an item that is pre-built and occasionally you'll run into these types of things. Um, the Obsidian Axe is an example of this. The Amulet of Vitality, which we just found down here, is an example of it. It's a regen amulet that makes you gain hit points every turn, but also gives you a boost of 15 hit points. It can be an amazing item to find on certain characters. Um, on this one, my hit points are already pretty damn high. I honestly think I just want the extra SH, oddly enough. So we're just going to keep our basic amulet of, uh, of reflection. I think some people might disagree with that choice, but I'm going to stick by it. Okay. Um, let's go down into Snake 3. You'll see Anacondas in here. They're very, very, very powerful melee guys who have a high chance of constricting you. But we go right through them. Ah, we've just found one of the best consumables, the Sack of Spiders. It'll be completely useless to you unless you have some evocation skill. But once you have it, it will, uh, when you use it, it has a chance of destroying the bag, but it also has a good chance of spawning a bunch of spiders on top of you and at the same time webbing your enemies, which is kind of like a net, which stops them from moving and attacking. Um, they can still cast, um, cast spells, but they can't use ranged attacks. Um... So, it's really strong. A lot of turn economy there. Vashnia is a unique uh, sharpshooter. You know, you can expect her to do a lot more damage. She can also blink her allies away. Uh, with all this crap on the screen, I'm going to show you guys a trick. I'm going to show you guys a couple tricks, actually. First of all, um, I don't want to... Uh... Oh, shit. Was that... Was that Jorgren? Did we kill Jorgren? And I just kind of tabbed through him? Oh, I must have walked away from him. Yeah, because I wasn't mesmerized from him. All right, I'll talk about that unique too, but hold on. Vashnia just blinked away, hence the purple cloud of translocational energy. And we're looking at like 120 damage possible from these sharpshooters, so it's really bad, right? Let's use a fog scroll. Okay, so as you can see, it didn't quite work, did it? Um, I can't move away because of my axe. What we're going to do is we're going to dig. We're going to create a more advantageous position for ourselves. We dig here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jorgren has dig now. Yeah. Okay, this is a 
horrible combination of things to be fighting at the same time. Jorgren is a really, he's one of the most powerful uniques in the game, actually. Um, he has grasping roots that can hold you in position and take down your EV, which is real bad when I'm also fighting a bunch of sharpshooters. He also has the ability to petrify me at 50%. Um, this is, in fact, really damn bad. So I'm going to burn one of my best consumables. I'm going to use Blink. I'm going to go all the way up here. Oh, I can't blink away from the sharpshooter, right? Right, the mesmerize affects that. Um, okay, in that case, I'm going to blink away, if only to make sure I don't get petrified. Okay. It's kind of a shame that he showed up here, because he's a huge MR threat. Okay, now I'm going to use region and MR+. plus. I probably should have hasted deal with this problem, but I think instead we're going to telly so we get out of it. And then while we're doing this, we're just going to swing, lighten the load a little bit. We teleport to an unknown part of the floor. You notice how I teleported even though I was nearly full hit points. That's pretty much what you want to do. Um, whoops, MR++. Okay, still 2% chance to petrify, but that's a little better. So that's pretty much what you want to do. You don't want to be teleporting and you're almost dead already because you could end up somewhere very painful. Um, it's, a, it's a move that you want to do basically to get yourself ready to, you know, you see a situation is going to turn bad, you deal with it with a teleport. Um, why are you not making food, Stormworm? Something bad happened? Oven started spewing fire. Oh God, be careful. All right, so Jorgren has some AC. Let's take that away. We're going to debuff him with the Acid Wand, right? Now he has no AC. Um, now I'm going to I'm going to use Clouds on him. We got one of the best Clouds, negative energy. I was hoping he would just walk next to me instead of casting spells, and that is what he did. So we got some free damage on him as he approached. Now I'm just going to swing. I miss. I miss with my headbutt, but he takes damage from the draining. Swing again. I hit. He's drained again, swing again, swing again, swing again. All right, he behaved like a delicate little kitten and did not actually attack us um, with his spells, which is really good. But he can he can do a ton of damage with his iron shot and whatnot. So I treated him with the respect he deserved. He could have very well killed us. On this character, Vashni is less of a big deal, so I'm just tabbing her. What I was trying to do, um, and I basically failed entirely to showcase it because I forgot that Jorgren has dig. I was over here. I was trying to make um, what's called a kill hole when I when I dug up in this direction, and then Jorgren just kind of ruined it by digging into it. Um, like if I went up here, imagine if I was here, and then I dug again in this in this direction, right up here. Um, if I was standing right here at that point, only one thing could see me if it showed up there, and then we could just obliterate things one at a time basically as they showed up. It's a super cool trick especially against uh, ranged attackers. Identify, scroll of summoning, that's useful. Uh, Broadax of flaming, we'll cut hydra heads but we're well past the point of caring about that. Um, okay, summoning summons what's called shadow creatures. Um, it'll summon a group of allies based on uh, what is currently on the floor so or what can spawn on that floor so if I'm if I'm here I would get like Naga allies uh oh um, that is Roxanne and she is mesmerizing us because of the axe I'm gonna do a brothers in arms and let my do a couple of these and let my trolls do some give me some help here do I have silence yeah I do okay we're just going to go up and kill her, and if she does a ton of damage... Roxanne is a special enemy, another unique. She's a statue, so she can't move. Typically not very dangerous, since you can just walk away from her. However, if you do try to engage her, she can blink other close and bring you close to her. And her most important ability is LCS, which can do... Uh, I don't know, like 100 damage. Um, Roxanne, Crystal Spear 3d32, 96 damage. But we have Silent Scroll, which can just stop her from casting spells. So if she had started getting rambunctious, um, we would have just wrecked her. Notably, she always has a book beneath her, which always, always, always has statue form and some other earth spells in it. 
Statue Forum being one of my favorite spells, uh, Roxanne is one of my favorite enemies to see. However, we're not using magic this time, so that is outside the scope of this guide. Encrusted Fusti Balus. That's a, like a sling, but we don't care about that. Okay, um, anything to identify? There's a ring. Let's just wear that to identify it. Curse string of slang. Okay, we'll use remove curse and get that off. For the positive energy. Okay. We have three scrolls of enchant armor. I could actually start enchanting up the large shield, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm unlikely to find a better shield than that. Although I said the same thing about the regular shield. Uh, I think I'm more confident this time. So we'll take that to plus five. But you'll notice plus five was the highest we could enchant the other one. But because this is a large shield, this one can be maximally enchanted to plus eight. Kind of cool. Alrighty. Um, let's, let's go down to Snake Pit 4. This is the branch end. Hmm. Easy stuff so far. You'll notice we got um, stuff surrounding us from the Guardian Serpent. And actually, let me look at this real quick. We got teleported. It says your surroundings suddenly seem different. So I didn't get yanked towards monsters. That means it wasn't a trap that did that. The uh, Naga Mage actually cast teleport on me. I was just playing too fast to see it. Um, what actually happens is... So, okay, so notice how it has teleport other here. 27% chance to work. And it just cast it on me again. Um... Naga Mage points at you and mumbles some strange words. You feel strangely unstable. This is the same effect as the teleport scroll. And if I really was afraid of this, what I could do is I could just read a scroll of teleport to cancel it. Um, but this character doesn't... Even if I got teleported into the actual end vault with a million Nagas around, this character is strong enough to sort of deal with that. So I'm kind of playing fast and loose with, loose with this to some degree. Tab, tab, tab all this stuff. Soviet era oven. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe you should unhook it. Okay. I think we just saw a new type of enemy uh, and I just sort of bowled over him. It was the little brown Naga uh, who is a Naga ritualist, but he's, he's nothing special. He just, he can poison you anywhere on the screen. Okay, this is the branch end. Again, notice there's stone. Really good sign that you're entering the ending. This is a fun place to emulate, just like in Swamp, but I think I'm just going to tab this stuff. Notice how... Oh god, how am I slow? Can Nagarajas do that? How did I get slow? Maybe Naga Mages can do that. Hmm... That's a curious thing. I have to check this log. It's buried in here somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. Somehow I am slow. Very strange. Slow is one of the most dangerous effects to have in the game. I was playing too fast and I just missed it. Hmm. Well, if that becomes a problem, we can uh, we can drink a cancellation potion, right? Do we have one? We have seven. Wow, that's a lot. So we're just going to fight. Notice how I still attack at 1.0 speed, so... Slow is not a huge deal right now, as long as we're attacking. Okay, we killed that group. Let's, um... Let's go upstairs and rest. I'd be doing this a lot more if I didn't have this axe in my hand that's mesmerizing me. Okay, we auto-explore. We see that... I haven't done anything, by the way. I just pressed O. And I, the, the, what happened is this dude immediately blinked everything around me and then everything swung on me. And here's something really important. One of these enemies has a whip of distortion. Weapons of distortion can teleport you around the level, they can blink you around the screen, and most importantly, they can send you to the abyss. 
If you see an enemy with a weapon of distortion in the early game, you really, 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 really don't want to let it hit you because there's a chance it will send you to an area called the Abyss that will simply uh, kill you in the early game nine times out of ten. Right now, though, I don't really care. Uh, I am going to... Do I want to Berserk? I probably... Actually, I bet I can't Berserk. I can't... Yeah. Whoa, I can Berserk. Okay, I just wanted to test that. I thought Mesmerize stopped you from Berserking. I shouldn't have done that. Um... Yeah, I really shouldn't have done that because now I'm trapped in a berserk state while also mesmerized. I thought that was going to stop me from doing that. We'll slaughter everything, but unfortunately we can basically do nothing but move towards stuff and swing on it. I mean, I'm super strong and it'll probably work out fine, but... Okay, it ended. We're slow now, though. Glad I didn't get paralyzed. Let's telly and get out of here. Rest on the staircase. Still, well, it's super risky in this case because um, you kind of have to move towards people. You can't you can't spend turns walking away while the berserk state ends. Um, so as risky as berserk always is, it's even more risky with this dumb axon. Um, for some reason, I was under the impression that this kind of mesmerize stops you from berserking, but I guess that in the case of the axe, if it if the source of mesmerizes from the axe, you can still berserk. Okay, check it out. I'm gonna burn my lamp of fire. Now we got two, we got two streams this time because my evocations has grown higher since the last time I used it. Kind of cool, right? I'll go into the fire, it's fine. Actually, let's fly. This is a lot of damage possible. I have a lot of tellies, so we're gonna burn one, and while we're waiting for that to end, we're gonna we're gonna kill some of this stuff. Notice how low I am on hit points, but the Tella saves me before I really go below half. Of course, I was poisoned, which took me below half, but... Now, if I wanted to avoid having to burn so many teleports, and I don't really recommend doing it the way I'm doing it, um, instead, what you probably want to be doing is, like, luring this stuff out a little bit at a time. Um, and again, the only reason I'm not doing that is because I'm using this axe, which has that unfortunate mesmerized property. We could still do it to some degree by, like, taking the axe off. Uh, but um, I don't want to burn my remove curse scrolls because I only have three of them. Anyway, you just saw me pick up, when the screen flashed, you saw me pick up the serpentine rune of Zot. We now have two runes of Zot. Now, as soon as we picked up the, de the decaying rune back in Swamp, we opened up the vaults. So... Every time you kind of finish in an area, you really want to evaluate, like, where am I going to go next? It was a bit of a no-brainer in this case. We could handle snakes, so we went to do it. Uh, there are going to be some cases where you want to do a little bit of vaults before before snake. So, um, we've cleared, cleared two runes. Uh, we could... Well, this is kind of another turning point. Like, right after finishing lair, there's a big decision to make. Right after getting your second rune, typically, there's a big decision to make, too. Where do we want to go? Um... I don't really want to be using this axe forever in some of the places where I'm going, uh, but I think we're okay. Let's, um, let me think about this. We pretty much have Omni Resistance, so Elf might be an okay place to be. It's very, very potentially dangerous, but we can turn off most threats in there by using the Scroll of Silence. So we have a get out of jail free card, so to speak. Elf does not have a rune in it, but what it does have is a giant pile of loot at the end. So you get experience and equipment, potentially very good equipment, and we're still kind of lacking a really good body armor. Like, we're wearing this plus four plate. Um, and by the way, I'm going to take that off, and we're going to go back and we're going to wear the MR because we're really hurting on MR now. Puts us to two pips naturally. There we go. Interested in trying Dominions 5? Yeah, at some point, sure. Assuming it's remotely streamable. Okay, uh, technically this character could probably handle slime right now. This character could handle vaults. This character is in a good place to do just about anywhere. So what you want to ask yourself is, like, what's the easiest place? You gift it to me? Okay, I appreciate that, man. Much appreciated. Yeah, so what you want to do is you really want to decide, like, where do, where do I want to be? You know, where do I want to, what do I want to be doing? What's, what's my, what's my next place to go? It's got to be the easiest place, the place that's least likely to kill you. Um, 
In our case, we, we want to, I mean, the way you determine that is you, you look at what resistances you've got. We're just stacked on resistances. Uh, and we could even have our core if we wanted to by swapping a ring. Not doing so hot on MR. Um, the vaults, there are a lot of threats in vaults, like the Orc Sorcerers or the Ogre Magi. Um, or there's just generic wizards, for example, which have really good chances to banish, paralyze, and slow you. And sure, we could turn on Trog Hand, but uh, what if what if we forget, you know? Or what if it activates uh, Paralyze on us as we auto-explore into it? Kind of like a minute ago when I auto-explored into the end vault and I immediately got swung on by like 50 things because it got teleported around me. That kind of thing can happen and it's very, very uh, dangerous. So it's better, um, if you can, to have the MR all the time. So I don't really want to go to vaults, not really. Um, Slime Pit, unfortunately, also has some MR threats like that. So we probably don't want to go in there either. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Elf, because while there are MR threats in there, they're not going to straight up kill me. The Storeworm's going to give me his broken oven. I don't, I don't want it. Please no. You need an, oh, you're saying you need a new oven next. All right, so we went into Elf, and just like Orc had a lot of Orcs, this is going to have a lot of Elf-type uh, enemies. It's also going to have some of these crappy Orcs for some reason. I guess they're visiting. So we've seen the mages before. Um, two new enemies, Deep Elf Archer. This is like the only real MR threat in here to be worried about, for the most part, anyway. Um, he's got Confuse and Slow. Don't want to be perma-confused, so we are going to use Trog's Hand in here. Uh, these archers are really annoying because they will blink away from you while shooting you. Cursed plus 14 oven. There you go. Um, there's also the Deep Elf Knight who hastes himself and casts Throw Icicle and also is not really a slouch in melee. Um, Icicle can do 3d20 damage, although that is reduced, I think, by 3 fourths. Or, well, reduced by 1 fourth, taken to 3 fourths, if you have at least one pip of R RC. So, um, helps a bit. They can also turn invisible, which we don't care about. Um, you typically won't see these big, what I call big boy elves, um, kind of the tier two elves that show up on the lower floors. You typically don't see them on elf one, but sometimes you will. Um, what I'm talking about are deep elf demonologists, deep elf sorcerers, deep elf death mages, and deep elf annihilators, um, and a couple others. These are deep elf demonologists. They have a chance to banish you, sending you directly to the abyss. Um, which they can't do to me as long as I have Trog's hand up, because my MR is too high. Um, they can also summon greater demons, which we haven't seen yet. Some of the most powerful enemies in the entire game. You know what? I have six scrolls of immolation. Let's just make my life super easy. Bye bye brother. You know what? I'm gonna make my life even easier by ice blasting him. It's a fun way to clear out that whole room. Let's close this, let's close this, and let's just rest. Alrighty, um, there's a phantom mirror here. This is an evocable ability, one time use only. Uh, being sent to the abyss is not guaranteed death stormworm, especially not at this point in the game. But early on in the game, you know, if you're like level, if you're like under level 15, it's it's virtually guaranteed death if, if the wrong thing happens. Once you're about level 15, it becomes a little easier to survive, um, especially once you have like a collection of resources to run around and try to find an exit with. Anyway, this room has a bunch of little um, dragons behind walls. Ice Dragon shoots ice damage. Iron Dragon is one of the harder dragons. He has metal splinters, but we can... Just melee his ass down. Let's surf these guys. Nothing's gonna come in here behind doors, probably. Ooh, Deep Elf Death Mage comes. Well, not Death Mage, just a Deep Elf Mage comes into view carrying a wand of scatter shot. I'm gonna shout to get his attention. I don't want him to waste any charges of that at me because I wanna make that my wand of scatter shot. Paralyze him, stops moving, beat his ass, take his wand. He also had a potion of might. Glad he didn't waste that. Scatter shot's a really useful tool. It's like a shotgun. Um, I think I didn't explain Phantom Mirror. It's a one-time use item that copies an enemy, or an ally, in fact, creating um, sort of a cloned ally. 
Um, in this branch, you're also going to see these guys, little, see a little music sign on the top left, they're animated weapons. Um, so they'll just be basic weapons with brands and stuff. Pretty strong in melee, they can be annoying to kill because they... Or, uh, let me, can I even look these up? No, I don't think I can look up animated weapons. We'll see another one soon enough. Um, but the point is they're, they're resistant to a lot, or immune even, to a lot of energy types, so it's hard to kill them for certain mages. For me, it's easy because I'm a melee guy. A lot of things in this game are easier when you're a melee guy. Identify potion of magic. We do not really need to tote around potions of magic, so we're going to just go to our backslash menu and turn that off for pickup. I'm also going to turn off potions of berserk rage. There's a few narrow situations where I'd want it, but... Not really. Tab, tab, tab. Reflection actually kind of coming in handy. Um, here's a vault with a Demon Blade of Chaos. Animated Demon Blade of Chaos. By the way, it says right here what they're immune to. Poison, negative energy, electricity, and very resistant to fire and cold. If you're using energy damage on them, you're probably screwing up. There's a ghost in here too. Um, just a big beefy melee ghost. I don't want to bother opening this up because I can see there's no real useful reward in it, like a scroll of telly and some gold, but this Blade of Chaos could paralyze me or send me to the Abyss, so I'm just not going to fool with it. Sometimes discretion is the better part of Valor, especially in this game. Let's look what's on this floor. Okay, nothing I want Artifact Glaive, but we're well past the point of wanting to. Um... Switch weapons. All right, we're on Elf 2. There are three floors of Elf. Okay, there's a Demonologist. We want to kill him first. He's really a joke by himself. I mean, he could banish us, but I'll just truck sand to stop that from happening. The big deal is when he starts summoning big boy demons. Um, I think he just summoned this Loro Siproka, which is not the kind of demon I'm afraid of, although it does hit like a truck and drain mana. But we'll kill him and all of his buddies go away typically how this is going to go. Easier to kill the uh, summoner who has called up the demon than the demon itself. I want to drop some stuff. I have a very full inventory. Um, actually, we'll, we'll hold off. Actually, I'm going to drop Fan of, Fan of Gales. I rarely find it to be useful. Reach level 20. 27 is the max level, by the way. But even once you hit, even after you hit 27, you can still, you can still gain skill points. So experience does not become useful, useless at, uh, at level 27. Now it may look like all of this is very easy, but an ordinary, less tanky character would be having problems with almost all of this, especially the animated weapons. Or if I didn't have certain resistances, I'd be having problems. I have specifically set up my equipment so that, um, so that I'm going to have an easy time, not just in here, but pretty much everywhere. And I've been lucky enough that I'm not really missing, um, you know, much in the way of equipment. I'd like to have a little more MR, I guess, but for the most part, this character is set for life. You know, I could finish the game with what I've got right now. That doesn't always happen, though. This is a roguelike. It's, it's randomized. Your loot table's randomized. You may get bad lucked real hard. Um, if you haven't found a weapon... Oh, hey, I must have gotten int drained at some point. Look at that. I'm at three int. Um, let me go and grab this hat of resist, magic resist. Somebody must have summoned a Nekazek when I was tabbing through all that stuff super fast. Oops, hold on. Had a magic resist. I want to go right here, hit enter. Where are you? Hey, wear that. That'll take my int back up because that the other the Arlek hat I, I was wearing gives me int minus two. Um, Stormworm says, in these types of games, it feels until you eat a crit or you step into the wrong tile and activate or aggro something, you shouldn't. It feels easy. Okay. Yeah, um, that's the thing is, like, I can make the game look really easy and then 
All it takes, though, really, even on a character like this, is all it takes is one mistake, uh, and then you're going to be in deep, deep doo-doo. Anyway, what I was going to say was an elf... You find a lot of these animated weapons, so it's a good place to find weapons uh, if you haven't gotten your endgame thing yet. Because um, you'll tend to find endgame style weapons and you kill them and then the weapon drops to the ground and you can use it. This area with this ruined door, which is no longer ruined because I opened it, is called the Hall of Blades. It will always spawn on Elf 2. It has a bunch of Deep Elf Knights in it, Deep Elf Blade Masters, which is a higher level elf we haven't seen yet. There they are. And a bunch of animated weapons, so it's a good place to get a weapon if you really need one. Um, I'm just kind of doing everything in here for the experience. Uh, here's a Deep Elf Blade Master. He, he's very, very evasive. Notice the million pips of EV. He attacks really hard and really fast. But we can pretty much just kill him, I think. Yeah. Some characters will have a hard time with him. I'm more likely to have t a hard time with high-level elves. And this is going to be a great... Oh, hey, triple sword of electrocution. That could have been dangerous because I don't have my Arlec right now. Oh, I got my it back. Um, intelligence damage or any stat damage comes, comes off of you as you gain experience, by the way. But yeah, this character is likely to have problems with higher level elf casters later on that you haven't seen yet in elf 3, which is the final elf floor. Or at least he's going to have to be careful. And it'll be a great way to explain that just because I'm a Mibi does not mean I'm unstoppable. I assure you it's possible to die in a single turn if you make the wrong, wrong decision. Okay, nothing on this floor that I care about. Let's go down. Box of beasts on the ground, good. Identify, nothing to identify. There's a weapon shop with things I don't care about, although that Falchion with MR Plus would have been nice early in the game. All right, we're on Elf 3, the final Elf floor. Let's have into these easy elves. I almost want to... Gosh, I, I almost want to grab the Anti-Magic Broadaxe and use it here. It does less damage, but... Just being mesmerized is kind of painful. All right, here's an example of another big boy elf. Um, so this vault has a ghost vault. This one has a vampiric weapon, no big deal. Um, there's a stone giant here. He hits like a truck for 45 damage and can have boulders, large rocks that do another 20 on top of that. Here's the big boy elf I was talking about, Deep Elf Master Archer. He attacks like a madman. Um, huh, we're gonna, we're gonna open this up and just fight this stuff. Zerk. I don't think I'm going to be fighting really anything other than the stuff in this vault. Wow, I'm having a harder time here than I thought I would. That's not good. Um, oh boy, that's a lot of damage. I screwed up bad. Let's, let's cancel. Oh, shit. This is actually really bad. Um, well, we're not slow anymore. So you see how quickly things can go poorly if you make even a tiny mistake. I expected to be able to kill all this stuff basically instantly. But I didn't. I'm going to use a heal wounds. Brings me back to 51. Use another heal wounds. 71. Um, and just for safety, we're going to use a haste, so I'm moving faster. We're going to use a... oh, not another haste. We're going to use a might. I shouldn't have zerked into this stuff. I'm not exactly sure um, why this... oh, you know what? I should have looked closer at its defenses. Look at this. EV, massive AC. I guess I just expected to tear right through it with zerk. Um, no, we should have either not opened this up, or hasted and mited with potions to take it instead of berserking. That could have gone very badly very quickly. 25 hit points. Or maybe I just did that on purpose to uh, <laughs> to show what a dangerous situation looks like. But if you didn't, if you don't handle situations like that absolutely perfectly, like if you make a bad, if you make a bad decision that leads you into a situation like that, typically you can get out of it. Um, if you make the right choices, if you don't make the exact perfect choices, 
then it's going to very quickly devolve into your death. Um, I knew that heal wounds would, well, I knew the cancel would get the slow off of me, and then I knew heal wounds would most likely keep me, um, you know, alive because my defenses are good enough that they, I mean, you notice they didn't do any damage to me for the next couple turns. It's important to remember that in this game, the damage uh, amounts are very swingy. They can be very low, they can be very high. And so you can go for a very long time taking almost no damage, and then all of a sudden for like three turns in a row, everybody's just top rolling you. Got to have those potions and other items for those situations. For sure, yeah. Okay, we've come to the end vault, um, and we're seeing the big boy elves that I'm actually afraid of, okay? Um, Deep Elf Death Mage is not a huge deal if you have our negative, um, although he can call Lost Souls, and if there's a Lost Soul on the screen, then you kill something, that something will turn into a ghostly version of itself and not actually die. Deep Elf Sorcerers can banish you, so why don't we start out by using Trox Hand. Um, they can Corrosive Bolt you, which is an acid attack that does an enormous amount of damage, I think something like 80 possible. Let me take a look. 3d20 uh, for the Hellfire, or Damnation as it's now called, um, reduced by nothing. 3d18 for the Bolt of Corrosion, which is uh, 54, but then you add another 21 because Acid has an extra splash attack, so um, 75 damage possible if you don't have our Corrosion. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty dangerous stuff. Damnation can't miss, by the way. Okay. So, anyway, we have a few ways out of this, but the Mesmerize Axe is really going to screw us over. Um, so I'm going to take it off. Take a step like this. Um, and then I'm going to put it back on. And then I'm going to remove the curse. And just the simple little tiny repositioning is so good, because now this guy can't do anything to me really through the Deep Elf Death Mage. And in fact, I'm going to Lamp. Oh, and he was smart enough to move aside for his buddy. Nice job. Alright, why don't we put on Ring of Resist Corrosion instead of Poison Resist? Because Poison Resist is not going to help me much in here. I should have done that before. Um, but the Corrosive Bolt could do quite a bit of damage to me. So, Hurl Damnation, or Hellfire as I like to call it, they changed the name, and I think the name change is very bad. Um, it's like a fireball, basically. It doesn't do um, energy damage, but it, uh, but it explodes in the same pattern as an Ice Blaster or Fireball in a 3x3 three three box. So he's not going to do that to me, because he's next to, well, himself and the Deep Elf Death Mage. He's not going to want to damage himself. I'm playing on .24, Clef Area. Also, welcome to the stream, man. Um, he might Corrosive Bolt me, but because we have our Cornell, I'm less worried about that. So we're just going to swing on his ass. Down he goes. Okay, we're going to wait. Here's the big boy, the biggest of the boys. Um, you'll notice he has Crystal Spear, okay? So I may have all the defenses in the world, but he has, a, he has an attack that does 3d34 damage, uh, potentially. So that's 90, uh, 94, 98, 102 possible damage, not reduced at all guaranteed by GDR. Um, meaning that no matter how high my AC is, it might just not apply. And honestly, my AC isn't even that good. I only have 18 AC. That's kind of crappy, actually, for this point in the game. My defenses are really bad. Um, I do have a lot of SH, so I'll, I have a good chance of blocking it. But nevertheless, uh, we really want to be careful with this dude. So let's open up with an Ice Blast, or excuse me, an Acid, um, acid Wand. It actually missed, if you look right here. However, something really funny happened. He went ahead and immediately did his big boy attack. Um, but the Crystal Spear reflects off my Reflection Amulet Shield uh, and hits him with three exclamation points, which is a lot of damage. Uh, let's Ice Blast him. Ice Blast makes a good bit of noise, as I mentioned earlier. We might be drawing things out of the vault. You hear a shout X7. Oh, whoa. -oh. I wonder. I'm going to make a little kill hole, right? Two dig charges. Okay. Ah, right. The elementalist saw me. Okay, so he started making the walls into earth elementals, right? That's this yellow guy. He's got awakened earth. So you can't make kill holes against him, really. Um, you can, but he can't see you first. If he sees you, he knows where you are for sure, and he starts just messing up your day. It is a cool spell. Sadly, players can't get it. 
Um, Deep Elf High Priest um, has Smiting that still only does 17 damage, but it can hit you anyway. Instead of Hurl Hellfire, or Hurl Damnation if you want to call it that, he has Call Down Hellfire. Uh, this one is a Smite-targeted Hellfire. So instead of like somebody's in the way and it's going to hit, hit uh, that guy instead of you, no, he can call it down right on your head no matter where he is. Um, but being next to him protects you from that because still he's not going to blast you, you know, and blast himself, right? So once you're next to those guys, they're pretty easy. Or next to one of their friends. What is a kobold doing in here? Oh, it's a shapeshifter. We're just going to fight in here until it turns bad. I'm going to use Trog's hand so my hit points come back. Hmm, I might want to haste. I'm going to might, actually. So there's that lost soul. If I kill, let's kill something. Okay, so you see the screen flash as soon as I kill the Deep Elf Elementalist. Now it's a ghostly Deep Elf Elementalist. He can't be revived again by a lost soul. But um, for now, he's alive. I'm going to kill the Sorcerer first. He scares me the most. Kill the Elementalist. Charge right in here. We still are mited, so I can kill things in like one hit. Check it out. I am going to lamp over here. And if things even start to go badly a little bit in here, I'm teleporting out. Because it can, like, when, it, when things go bad in here, they go bad fast. Uh, let's, let's cloud so stuff has taken damage. Okay, there we go. Blast of cold. Cool. This mage. Um, I think I'm just going to actually hang out. Just like wait a turn with the dot dot key. Let the stuff take damage. I'll order my sun demon to attack. It's fine. Oh, I need Trog's hand again. It ran out. Lost a pharmacist in ETH Elf 3 the other day. Had Amulet of Bloodlust too. Oh wow. That sucks. Yeah, this is this is one of the easiest places to die in in the entire game if you make even a little mistake. Because look at the, just look at the amount of damage that's possible here right now. It's more than I would, it's more than I would like. Because, check it out. So whatever the melee happens from this long sword of electrocution, whatever the melee or icicle damage happens from this deep elf knight. Um, hey, Wesley, good to see you, man. It's mostly the end vault. That's true, although the big boy elves can cause a problem even before that. But look at the real damage here. First of all, 102 possible from the annihilator. So that's almost all my hit points right there. And then, look at this dude, uh, we've got a hasted depot sorcerer, and even with our core, he's doing a pretty solid amount with his corrosive bolt, like double, double the damage there. So, this is really a horrible situation you don't want to be in. Luckily, I have silence scroll, so I'm going to use one, and now everything in this little purple aura can't cast a goddamn thing. Um, so this annihilator, who was a deadly, deadly man before, is now uh, as harmless as a kitten. And we're just going to swing... Um, I'd like to read a scroll of Immolation, but I can't read scrolls right now. I can't activate god abilities right now, and I can't cast spells, not that I could anyway. So silence is a very dangerous thing to use. But it's also a wonderful sort of get out of jail free card in this part of the game. Um, I wanted to point out when I killed the demonologist, his ice fiend disappeared in a puff of smoke. Ice fiend is one of the most dangerous enemies that you could possibly run into. Um, especially at this point in the game. He has Symbol of Torment, which simply takes away half of your hit points, uh, reduced by some if you have our negative. Um, but he does that across the entire screen, so rather dangerous. Okay, um, why don't I lamp this fella over here? Hmm... I don't want to take any chances, so we're going to Ice Blast him and make sure he dies. Now we're going to back off. No reason to see, you know, tempt fate and see what else is in there. Just get back to full hit points on the staircase. There we go. Remember the Annihilator party during the .24 tournament? Yeah, I do. I do remember that. Didn't you get shafted into that, Wesley? What was that, Wizards? We're just auto exploring. We've cleared out most of the tough enemies here. Um, this stuff is easy. The annihilator, not so much. 
Now you notice how I'm I'm kind of moving in such a way that he he can't really shoot me because the the elementalist is in the way. I'm gonna melee him. We actually bounced another spear right into him. But if that had hit us and done a ton of damage, I could always um, my other like first of all I could I could silence to stop him from doing anything. Or I could use Scattershot to relatively guaranteed kill him instantly as long as I have enough evocations. So in here it's all about having sort of like get out of jail free cards if something bad happens. So Hell Sentinel, another really, really strong enemy, but because I'm next to the Demonologist it was no big deal, but he was smart enough to walk backwards. We could take a ton of damage here. So let's Acid Wand and uh, blast right through and kill their master and all of his little buddies go away. Sack of spiders. What's wrong with the sack of spiders? It's a nice little box of... It's a nice little bag of spiders to dump on your enemy. So yeah, ordinarily you would not see me just walking towards these enemies in a brain-dead sort of fashion. Um, but... Let's get intelligence. Um, in this case, we have the resists that allow us to kind of do that. What am I standing on here? Ring of Magical Power? I know, I don't want that. What can I drop? I don't want an Amulet of Rage. Um, I don't want another Ring of Positive Energy. One's enough. Ring of Pro Magic is pretty nice, pretty nice swap, but I eh, I should keep it on hand just in case I need to swap. Okay. At this point, we're basically just cleaning up the floor. Just tap into all this stuff. Always take the Annihilator slowly. There's, you know, all it takes is one turn of them sort of having a good time against you for things to go from easy to hard kind of the same for sorcerers oh spellbinder that's cute oh damn now that is an amulet that's going to make me stop using reflection Slay plus five, which I typically don't care too much about Slay, but it's got MR as well, so I want the MR. That's a good amulet. It's also got plus rage, which would, through evocation skill, allow me to evoke a Berserk Rage, but of course we don't need that. Um, I see that we also found one of the best gauntlets in the game. I have a plus one pair of gloves, but this is an unrand called the Gauntlets of War. We're being very spoiled by the items this run. We go from plus one gloves to plus three gloves with Slay plus five on them. Slay is the same as the bonus on your weapon, by the way. It adds another, um, well, it, it adds up to five damage in this case, and also five accuracy every time you swing. So we've got an extra 10 slaying right now on top of our 14 slaying from the axe itself. It's pretty outrageous, to be honest with you. This is an extremely, extremely good run, item-wise. Oh, a manual of axes. Huh. That's, um, hmm... We probably won't use that. I guess I'll carry it with me. Yeah. Cloak of the Thief. Um, slay minus two. Sin stealth. This is. I should. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't need the scarf for my RF plus, scarf and cloak take up the same slot. Um, if I didn't need the scarf for my RF+, I'd probably wear Cloak of the Thief. It lets you do, like, a fog effect whenever you want to. Endless fog clouds can be very, very useful. It also gives you Synv, but we don't need that. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. I guess I'll drop the Hat of Magic Resist at this point. Take a look at artifacts, see if we've missed anything. <laughs> Take a look at this floor, see if we've missed anything. Control F dot to look at the stuff on that floor. Um, hmm. No, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm pleased. Let's drop the ring of pro, pro magic. Okay, so again, uh, again, we are faced with a decision. I'm gonna change my skills a bit. We're going to take fighting armor, dodging to 20. Um, I really am going to have a hard time explaining how I do my skilling for characters like this because it's really, really intuitive at this point. I just kind of go for these little breakpoints and then every so often I uh, 
reevaluate from there. We're going for 25 shields because I had that manual and because that takes us to, you know, totally no, no penalty from our large shield. You don't have to go all that way, but I like to. Um, it can be a little bit wasteful, but since my aptitude's so good, it, it doesn't matter. It costs more experience, you see, the, the higher you go in a skill, which is why a lot of people recommend you don't do that. I am tempted to, to train Axis past Mendeley for, you know, to use up the manual, and I may do that after I get to about 20 on my defenses. Um, just because, why not, at that point, you know, very strong. Um, so yeah, Elf doesn't have any more branches coming off of it, didn't have a rune, just had a bunch of loot. But I, I feel good about doing it, don't you? I mean, look at, look at what we walked away with, you know, quite good stuff. Although I'm not, um, one thing I'm not happy with is my defenses. Like 20 AC, 14 EV, garbage. Really bad. Because um, I've dumped all my enchant armors into my large shield. So if I said, if I, if I thought that this character had one weakness, it would be that his defenses are just very low compared to what you probably should have on a character like this. Um, especially considering we're using the obsidian hacks. Okay, so I want to, um, I really want to do... I really would like to do um, slime if possible. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. Let me kind of walk you through my, my decision making here. So we did elf, we've done swamp, we've done snake, we've cleared lair. If we look at the control G auto travel to see where we can go, we could go to depths, we could go to slime pits, we could go to vaults. Um, acts of objectively cheating. Well, I don't know about that. It can get you killed if you use it wrong. Um, Anyway, yeah, so so we got Slime, Vaults, um, Elf, or not Elf, Slime, Vaults, Depths. A lot of people would tell you to go to Vaults right now. Vaults 1 through 4 is objectively probably the, the safest place um, that we could go right now, barring the existence of certain uniques that would be kind of annoying to deal with. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's going to be easier. I prefer to go to Slime at this point, if possible. Hey, Angie, Matt, what's up, man? Yeah, I had the stream. I, no, I had the stream mislabeled um, accidentally for a little while, but I fixed it. Um, although, if it just didn't notify you, then I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Twitch does a, has a bad habit of doing that. Anyway, um, so, so the deal is that I like to do slime right now if the character can handle it. But there's, there's several um, concerns that you, have to, you almost have to solve, okay? Or you have to have an answer to. Slime has enemies that do an enormous amount of cold damage to you, so you want to have a little bit of RC, at least one pip. Check. Okay, got that. Slime has enemies, two of them, Golden Eye, and more importantly, the Great Orb of Eyes, which can either confuse, perma-confuse, or paralyze you. You look at the Great Orb of Eyes, I see 1% para. Uh-oh, I don't want there to be any percent, really, especially because with the Golden Eyes, there's a pack of them that show up, and they'll just permanently confuse you if they manage to get you confused. And you can cure it with curing, but then they might just throw it back on. Even 1% is too much for me usually. So, um, we've got this hat of MR. I don't really want to replace that because I've got a nice little sleigh bonus from my existing hat. Um, so what we're going to do instead is, you remember this ring of MR? This one, it's right here. We're going to pick that up. We're going to wear that in the place of negative energy because there's nothing... Um, I don't think... Yeah, there's nothing here that is really affected by negative energy. So there's certain... Here's the thing about branches. If you go into a branch and you know exactly what kind of um, energy threats that you can expect, you can forego things. You know, I don't need our negative. I don't need our poison. There's no threats like that in slime. So you can gear yourself, if you have that luxury, if you found the right stuff, um, accordingly. I don't need RF either, in fact. Um, so... If I wanted to, I could take off my Scarf of Resistance, but I think, I think I'm going to keep it on, um, just because the extra RC might be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, you can, take, you can take off... Oh, can I re-equip the axe? Oh, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I think there is a technique like that. I think in this particular case, if you wear the axe, it can... I think if you're... No, if you're mesmerized, are you immune to Confuse? That I don't know. And I... I seriously doubt... I doubt the game will tell me. Hmm. I could look it up here, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
that's a good question, but you're very rarely going to find this X anyway, so it's almost um, irrelevant. But yeah, that's that would be good to know. I could possibly test it out, but I'd rather just be immune to their stuff. And as you see, I put on the ring of MR over my ring of uh, negative resist because I don't need it, and we've gone to 0% anyway. Um, best advice is just don't go in there unless you are immune. So we're going to go in now. Um, and so the three things you want going in here, and you don't have to have all these things, but if you're not like super expert at doing this place, you probably want to have all of them. So RC+, plus, enough MR to be immune to great orbs of eyes and golden eyes, and our core. Our core is huge in here. Um, you can get away with not having it, but boy is it hard. Okay, a bunch of these little slime creatures. This is the easiest enemy, really in slime so it looks easy so far right no big deal we fought these before oh you just wait honestly i'm kind of a madman for using this axe in here okay so slime is a little different you notice how i've been fully exploring oh shit uh hold on a second uh i'm going to i'm going to paralyze this because the mr is bad okay that was really bad don't walk on this green um, it doesn't say anything, it just says floor, but if you look at the walls, it'll say the wall is acidic to the touch. You're taking corrosive damage every time you walk against the um, in, on these green spots. So I stupidly walked into one, and with the mesmerize, it was really bad. Anyway, you'll notice that everywhere else I've been fully exploring, um, in slime, however, we're going to go down... As soon as we uh, as soon as we find a downstair after kind of kind of clearing the area around it, have I explained the mutation system yet? No, and I'm go I'm going to actually. I was waiting until we got in here. I will explain that as soon as we see our first shining eye. Um, anyway, so we we are here in slime one. We found the staircase to slime two. We want to finish this fight, and here's where things get really risky. So this acid blob, he's fast, right? He's faster than you. That means um, I think he's like speed twelve or something, maybe faster. Sometimes he gets two attacks when you make one movement. Um, he can hit for up to 42 damage to deal extra acid damage as well. He can also spit acid for the same amount of damage as an Aklob plant, so a total of 41 if you do not possess our core. And I, I don't know exactly how much it's reduced, maybe half if you do have our core. But that's 41 damage, and if he happens to move quickly, that could be 82. 82 damage. That's quite a lot for one turn. On top of that, he can reduce your... AC and your slay bonus by uh, corroding you. So the best thing to do when you face these dudes, because they can shoot that at range, is to try to keep a dude between you and them. Now this Eye of Draining, he's nothing. He, he can't even attack me. He can drain my mana. Mr. Acid Blob is not going to shoot me through the Eye of Draining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my, my buddy, uh, I did T and then R to retreat. I told my Chaos Spawn to retreat, right? And what I did was I just waited a couple turns because what I wanted was for my Chaos Spawn not to kill this Eye of Draining. I wanted to just wait and let the Eye of Draining sort of play goalie for me to stop his acid blobs from, from hitting me with spit acids. So that's the optimal way to avoid taking damage on the way in. Um, and now that he's next to me, I'm a big boy. I'm just going to swing into him and probably just take him down. Notice I already got corroded for minus four. Um, so that already has been kind of bad. Um, here's another one. I'm going to use a file of floods to get allies, right? Oh god, there's... Ooh, that's a lot. Um, okay, this is okay. We're going to approach. We're going to approach and our, our water elementals are going to block the path until they die, which they did. Uh, these guys are not resistant to electricity, so let's start stacking damage on them. He spits at me. Um, I resist. I'm splashed with acid. Sap again. Step again, killing one. Step again. I really want to be damaging them as much as possible. I want to do that as they approach. But now we're just going to walk up to them. Got them. Three acid blobs in a row is actually extremely dangerous. Um, but we had the right tools and the right tactics to make it look easy. Now, you pretty much always want to be resting in here uh, on a staircase, ideally an upstairs. Um, in this case, I did it on a downstairs. The... The thinking being that if you if you run into if stuff explores into you while you're resting, you'll just go upstairs and be okay. We go downstairs though. Um, 
Do I want to dig? There's a downstairs right there. Um, I'm going to show this off, even though I'd rather not waste the wand. If I dig here, um, each of the, the walls creates slime in an area, a three by three area around it. So when I dig these out, the slime disappears, and I can walk straight to the downstair. Okay, Shining Eye. This is one of the um, most obnoxious enemies in the game. So the deal with him is that he has uh, Malmutate, right? He doesn't even have an attack, he just has Malmutate. But despite this, he can ruin your whole game if you uh, play wrong around him. He has a chance um, every time he has an action to use this on you. And if there's nothing between you and him, if he can see you and there's nothing between you and him, he, he activates it on you and you get a bad mutation. There are extremely bad mutations in the game. Um, three of them are especially bad. There is uh, Teleportitis, which kind of randomly teleports you every so often to enemies. Um, there is Berserkitis, that berserks you every so often when you attack. And there is Scrollitis, which basically doesn't let you use your scrolls um, if you're in combat. Extremely bad, right? So the name of the game is to keep an enemy or an ally between you and the, the Shining Eye if possible or to simply cut line of sight somehow between you and the Shining Eye such that uh, he, he cannot... Um, basically, you're trying to minimize the number of turns, ideally to zero, that he is uh, able to see you before you're killing him. So what we're going to do is we're going to fog. Sadly, he can still see me. And I can't move backwards because of the stupid axe. We're going to take off the axe, which is a very quick movement, actually. 0.3. Um, and hey, the fog actually expanded more while I was doing that. That's cool. Um, I'm going to make... I'm going to activate one of my boxes of beasts. A mature weird ox beast comes out. I'm going to do another one. I'm not going to need too many of these things, so it's fine. And in fact, neither got used up when I did that, so that's cool. These guys get stronger depending on how much evocations you have. Scrollitis is basically bad eyesight. Oh yeah, sorry, I was thinking of the um, I was thinking of the rue sacrifice. Yeah, scrollitis is um, it, it makes it take longer for you to use your scrolls. It doesn't actually stop you from using them, but in combat, um, not being able to just blink away instantly is is a hugely bad thing. All right, we're gonna we're gonna shout a bit. Okay, so we're going to attack. We're gonna T A. That's shout and then order to attack. We ordered them to attack the guy. You'll notice he's being constricted. Look at the thing at the top right. Um, and it says the shining eye gazes at you. So he's trying to get me, but you know, my boys are in the way, right? So instead of me getting one of those nasty mutations, uh, my boy here eats it. It says he's misshapen and mutated. He's temporarily got some AC minus is how that works for enemies. And now we just, um, we just chill out. We just chill out and let, let him get wrecked by our allies. It's no problem. Uh, glowing orange brain. That could be annoying. Um, he, can, he can drain my intelligence. Um, yeah, that's a really annoying enemy. Can we ice blast him from this range? No, we can't. What can I do from this range? I guess I can enslave this guy. Okay, now we will... Ice Blast. I want to kill this brain as fast as possible. It's okay if I hit my own slime creature. It's no big deal. Same same rules, by the way. He can't brain feed me. I don't think if there's dudes in between me and him. But we don't have very much intelligence to spare, you see. Oh, attack unarmed? No. Or my axe again. He blinked next to me. Bad call, brother. Take his ass down. Seems like a super annoying dungeon. Yeah, it's definitely... You know, I love Slime Pit because it is so annoying. I love the fact that it's um, extremely exacting in the way that you play. But if you play well, you can do it early. Um, if you have the right tools and you know how to use them. Alright, the Azure Jelly, this is the guy that does like... 200 some damage if you don't have any RC. Look at that. He hits for 12 damage each, hits twice for 12 damage each, and then deals another 45 damage on each of those attacks that's cold. So that's like 100 damage, plus all the physical. It's amazing. And he's fast, so he can attack twice. But we have RC++ and a big, a big axe, so... I was going to say a big ass axe. So uh, we just kind of take, take those guys down. 
Go down, there are five floors of slime. We're on floor four. A bunch of little jellies, those are like D1 enemies. <laughs> nice ambush, bro. Sometimes these floors will be cut up like this. Um, I guess I'm gonna use my last dig charge and feel real bad about it because digging is a useful resource. I mean, I could have just taken the pain and walked through that, but I, I don't like to do that. All right, actually we're on slime four. Um, what I like to do on slime four is I like to auto, I like to auto explore and if possible, kill everything on the floor. Um, and the reason for that is if possible, I want to reveal two different staircases um, for reasons that will become apparent later. Like if I need to stair dance and go up and down different places. Unfortunately, we've gotten bad luck a bit. Um, and this is a separated out floor. I could burn a magic map and show you. Oh man, if we had a little more digging, we could we could cut this out and connect all this stuff. We'd need like three, four charges though. Explaining TRJ in a beginner friendly manner. Oh, I will. Oh, I will. Okay, Shining Eye. Dang. Um, what's the what's the most likely way to stop this dude from mutating me? We've done we've done well so far. Except I guess we got mutated once already. Armor fits strangely on your poorly shaped body, so that's one of the reasons my AC is so low. I wonder when that happened. I have to look that up in the log at some point. Maybe it happened just now and I didn't see it. Curious. Anyway, um, so we could fog, but it's not really likely to block the site with all this space around me. And it's going to take a lot of actions for me to stop that. So what I'm going to do instead is, uh, or a lot of actions for me to get back through the fog. I'd have to take off my axe basically and then walk backwards. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to make a sack of spiders. Okay, we're going to order them to attack. Okay, good. They're between me and him. Good, they'll just kill him. God, armor fits poorly on your strangely shaped body. What that means is half of my base AC from the plate armor isn't applying, so that's stealing five AC from me right now. What a robbery. What a highway robbery. And yet, it's, it's not even the worst thing I could find, and so I don't want to burn my precious three potions of mutation to get that off, because it's not even guaranteed. All right, so I ordered them to attack. They're not quite between me and him, unfortunately. Let's take off the axe. Damn, there's mutation number two. As you can see, there's there's no real way right now, unless I was like walking around with spiders all the time, like fully surrounding me, which I don't want to do because I only have so many sacks and there's a chance of them disappearing every time I use them. There's no real way to guarantee I don't get mutated. So the mutation system is in a very poor place um, right now, unfortunately. But we do have mutation potions, so we can get some of this off. This is actually not a very bad mutation. Um, if we take damage, then we have a chance of losing some stats. But as long as it's only the first level of the mutation, um, we're pretty much okay. Okay, where are the axe again? I'm gonna remove curse again. My little spideys are gonna take care of the problem. Let's order these guys to all attack the acid blob. Even though he's an acid monster, he can be covered in acid by my rust devil, so haha. -ha. His, his AC goes to nothing. <laughs> Alright, so this is essentially a gigantic arena, right? Um, slime 5 is just a big circle, and then in the center there's this stone structure, and inside there's a guy aptly named the Royal Jelly, because he's basically the king of all the jellies, right? Uh, he's also sort of the avatar of Jeevya one of the gods, so if you kill TRJ, you actually kill Jeevia and you can't worship, in it, worship him anymore. Let's order my bros to attack this guy. Putting them between me and him. Blobby Lord makes his appearance again. Oh no, he was such a such an issue. I want to order my guys to attack him. Ah, oh, damn. I'm going to move up. So see, straight line. And the Great Orb of Eyes is blocking the path between me and the Shining Eye. And then we're just going to wait. Because the Great Orb can't really do a whole lot to me. And we waited again, and the Six Fur, he just lightninged the crap out of him until he was dead. This is how you got to play if you want to avoid having your game ruined by mutations. Now, even if I got a really bad mutation, that doesn't mean it's the end of the game. But, man, it can really... <laughs> Ask Tone if he's still around how he feels about 
about mutations. He played a game with like all of the worst mutations because I assume I assume he didn't take any of them um, or enough of the steps necessary to avoid getting bamboozled. Uh oh, uh oh, that's really bad. Uh oh, the Azure Jelly sets off the alarm. The alarm trap emits a blaring wail. Um, Sentinel's mark forms upon me. TRJ is going to come out of his little uh, little temple, his little little area, stone area in the middle there. Um, and the last thing we want to do is fight him out in the open. I'll explain why later. I have about a billion cancellation potions, so let's just use one that immediately takes the mark effect off. Holy shit, I'm being attacked from outside of my range of vi vision. Now, just because I purged off the mark, they don't know where I am, but they already knew I was here, so they're all heading towards this location. So we're going to telly. I'm going to start swinging. Oh, there he is. There's our boy. Yeah, hold on, NG Man. I'm, I'll get to that. All right, the Royal Jelly. Um, as you can see, a very big, a big boy. 231 hit points. Not very good AC or EV, but he is fast. He is large. He hits for 1 million damage. He hits for 1 million acid damage. And he has lots of attacks. Uh, and most importantly, when you attack him, or when you attack him, rather, he will uh, release jellies. Very, very strong jellies like the ones we've been fighting. He can't use stairs, so you can just sort of walk away from him. There is a trick um, to fighting him. There are a few tricks that you can use to fighting him. In fact, the royal jelly fight is essentially all memes. First of all, just to take a look at what he's got going on, um, notice his MR is huge. Huge MR, so the easy path of just trying to paralyze him is not going to happen. Although if you have enough evocations and then you use a scroll of vulnerability and then try to paralyze him, it might very well work. Or enslave him for that matter, but it's kind of a, a meme strategy. I don't want to show that. I want to show, I want to show the absolute best way of handling him, okay? So instead, this is horrible positioning, so we're just going to tally. Okay, we're going to end up right back up here. That's fine. I, I don't care if the rest of the floor is coming for me. I care if TRJ is coming for me. So this is pretty much where I was before, but TRJ is not going to know I'm here. So I'm cool with that. Let's make a box of beasts. Let's get it on. Anani Badger, I love you with your, eight, with your nine months subscription. Thanks, man. Much Three appreciated. Three quarters a year together now, W-O. All right, so I made two box beasts. Elders are, um, I think, a step below the highest possible beast. They're very, very strong. If you look at them, they hit for like 33 damage. It's quite good and can sting for 20 damage. They're different um, from each other. Like this one's an elder shock sting beast. This one, with this one's an elder fire ox. So the fire ox has like fire breath and just kind of put some stuff together. Just fight this stuff. Oh, let's um, let's Trunks hand. I need to regenerate my hit points because tons of damage coming. We see the biggest boy of all, the Titanic slime, who can hit for 110 damage. I don't want to get hit for 100, 110 damage, so let's paralyze him, which works. They have bad MR even when they're all merged. So he'll die real easy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, let's um. Let's go into TRJ Stronghold. And so this is the only place where you're guaranteed guaranteed to have a um, an altar of Jeevia. Oh my god, a naughty badge. You can switch it? You can you can you can uh, you can change the side of the you can flip it. That's awesome. Anyway, yeah, so there's an altar of Jeevia here. Oftentimes there will be one right outside the uh, slime the uh, the slime room. But or the slime vault, slime vault, slime branch is what I'm trying to say. But um, this is the only guaranteed one. So if you really want to worship Jeevia, you have to come down here sometimes, which makes Jeevia a god that's really not worth using. <laughs> um, however, he is the only way to guaranteed uh, get rid of mutations regardless of any item RNG. So, you know, there are times I guess you might consider it Jeevia run. No, 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 no. This is a tutorial, so I can't do shenanigans like that. Um, you'll notice that there are these stone walls blocking my way to all this fat loot. And boy, what a, what a pile of loot it is. In fact, and we, uh, we can see that there's a slimy rune of Zot here. There's two ways to, well, three ways to remove these stone walls. The first is to worship Jeevia. 
and have a uh, max piety or I think five star piety and they'll tear down the walls for you and the slimes will actually eat most of the loot because slimes are assholes. Um, and all the, all the slimes will be friendly to you at that point. Um, well, they're friendly to you as long as you're worshiping GV. But anyway, um, that's one way. The second way is to kill TRJ. These walls come down. The third way is to use some kind of um, some kind of dungeon affecting spell or power to clear out the stone walls. Stone walls are really hard to remove. There's only three things in the game right now that will do it. Uh, one is a fed hoss ability. Another is the shatter spell, which is a level nine spell, very hard to get to. And the third is a Lagonu god ability. Um, so basically most characters are just going to kill TRJ or not go for this rune at all. Since three of those abilities, or three of those, well most of those methods require worshipping a, a particular god. Let's rest in here. I'm going to show you guys the correct way to kill TRJ. The most straightforward way that will work on any melee character with the right resistances. It's been a little while since I've done this, um, but we're going to see how, it, uh, how, how much I can remember. So, once you're inside this little vault, inside this little, little shrine area, and you've killed everything on the floor except for TRJ, you kind of keep wandering off to the edge, shout a little bit. There he is. So the goal is to find him, right? Okay, so I'm going to buff up now that I've seen him. I'm going to haste. I'm actually going to take off my axe because, well... Um, <laughs> I need to position perfectly for this. I'm going to use agility. Uh, that increases my evasion, makes it harder for him to hit me. I'm going to get might. That makes it easier for me to, uh, you know, kill him very quickly. In some situations, I might want to use a potion of resistance, which would give me RC plus and R core plus, but we're actually pretty good on resistances, so I'm not going to burn that. Um, and I think, I think that's going to be good to go. Yeah. All right, so we're going to walk backwards. I'm gonna walk backwards again. I'm gonna walk backwards to right here. And so he's he's here now, right? Um, wait a minute, do I? Holy shit, no nets have spawned. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're gonna press a dot now to get him next to us. And so right here, if I had nets, and it's actually stunning to me that we haven't found a single net, but if I had nets, I would throw a net on him now to sort of guarantee that I don't take any damage. Um, but instead, I'm gonna move down and to the left, right? And I block the Royal Jelly's attack. Great. I don't want to do damage to him yet, because he'll summon all kinds of crap on my head. Now the goal of getting him into this exact little spot, and it works for any of the four exits, um, the goal is for me to be here, for him to be here, and for there to be an open space here, and an open space here. No, no, without, without nets it still works, it's just, less, it's just less good. Nets stop him from attacking you while you're doing this, but if you're a strong melee character with Agi up, you should be able to survive some rounds with him. So, when I hit him, he's going to start pooping out jellies, right? But we don't want those jellies to be by me. We don't want him to be able to run away through the jellies either. So, they're... the obvious decision now is we need to make allies somehow. I could phantom mirror him to have a friendly TRJ. I could read a summoning scroll to summon all kinds of jellies on his head, which will be hostile to him. Or I could do a sack of spiders. Now, the best thing right now is generally going to be the scroll of summoning. We'll use that. Um... Okay, the Shining Eye will die fast, the Slime Creatures will probably not. Alright, this is great. Now we're going to wear our axe again. Um, we're going to start swinging now. Now typically I'd be keeping him in a net this entire time, I'd be chucking the net on his head. But we haven't found a net, inexplicably, so we're just going to have to do this old school, no problem. He probably, uh, by all rights, shouldn't be able to be affected by nets anyway. So we swing and we see he's pooping out jellies, but they're not next to him because there's stuff occupying those tiles. There's a death ooze down here. Swing again. That flash is my, my slime creature's merging. And he's pooping out even more super dangerous jellies, but they're all down here, not bothering me in my fight against him. Swing again. You slice the royal jelly like a ripe choco. Your hands burn. You headbutt the royal jelly. My hands burn because I take damage when I attack him. Something hits your shining eye. So he spit out a jelly like right here, and it's hitting my Shining Eye, which is not so good for me. But the Shining Eye somehow is surviving all that. Swing one more time. He's almost dead. My very large slime creature hits the Royal Jelly for a ton of damage, killing him. The stone walls suddenly crumble and collapse with an infernal noise. The power ruling this place vanishes. The dying Royal Jelly spits out three more jellies. So... 
right about here, um, if you're in a bad place, like my character is really, really strong and he rolled well, um, so he can continue to fight. But if not, I would teleport away. I am going to just, just to be sure, I'm going to remove curse in case I need to take the sacks off quickly. But because I have these buffs up, might agi and haste, I want to make good use of them and just kill this shit. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to MO to really save myself the trouble. What am I ice blast here? There we go. Yeah, baby. Even with all these buffs and this strong character, this corrosion, corrosion minus four stacks heavily, so it can go extremely bad, extremely fast if you're not careful. A bit of harm, we'll drop that. Shiny Steam Dragon Skills, that's a low AC armor, so we don't care. Grab the slimy rune and feel its power. Three runes, that's enough to enter the realm of Zod, it says at the bottom. Um, scroll of Silence, Scroll of Identify, Potion of Curing. Crystal Plate Armor has the most AC in the game. Rather tempting. If I had like a gigantic stack of enchant armor, I would probably use it, but... Don't really care. I'm going to see what the shield is. Shield of Protection. Rather have my large shield, I guess. Heal wounds. Enchant armor. We're going to enchant the large shield. Worth it to use the crystal? Well, not just with one, I don't think. Um, the thing is, we're still getting MR from the plate. I think I'm going to live with crappy defenses for the time being. Because if I put on this crystal... Hold on, I'll just grab it for the road and we'll show it off in a minute. Um... Okay, I'm going to look at this equipment. Not not too much. Didn't get too much in the way of interesting stuff from here. Okay, so we'll leave Slime Pit. Put on the Crystal Plate. We go from 20 AC, 14 EV, to 24 AC, 12 EV. Why did I get such a tiny boost? Because armor fits poorly on my strangely shaped body. Uh, I should be getting 7 more AC from this. I should be at 31 AC. But given my horrible mutation, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to... Uh, wreck my EV by two points um, for like four points of AC, I guess. Um, especially when I'm losing the MR as well. Should have swapped to Chief, yeah. Well, we do have three potions of mutation, and if I really wanted to, I could drink one to get this off, but the problem is that the potion of mutation stands a chance of giving you bad mutations, and so I, every time I drink a potion, I'm risking giving myself one of those game-ending or close-to-game-ending mutations, such as teleportitis and so we don't we don't want to do that um so as a result we're not going to do that uh and essentially i'm just going to kind of keep on keeping on until i find maybe gold dragon scales i might wear that sounds terrible it does sound terrible doesn't it yeah we've had bad luck in the body armor department but we've had such good luck with everything else that i really can't complain can i have i explained the bad mutes yes i have or the worst ones anyway um, anyway, uh, let's see. So we did slime, we have three runes, and at this point, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, well, I've got three runes, I should go to Depths, I should go to Zot, I should go finish the game. But what you should do instead, if you want to be optimal, if you want to be safe, um, you should do Vaults. And Vaults has a lot of complications to it, um, especially in Vaults 5, which kind of like TRJ has its own gimmicks, and I would say that Vaults 5 is significantly harder than Slime 5, unless you know how to, unless you really know how to do it. Um, and even if you know, really know how to do it, I'd say that like, if you have equal knowledge of slime and of vaults, slime is going to be easier, easier for you nine times out of 10, as long as you have the tools. Um, I'm basically as expert as this game is as possible. And I, to this day, have trouble with vaults five sometimes, just because um, depending on the, depending on the character, you can have an incredibly rough time with it. Now, the same is, is true of slime, but less often um, because it's less, uh, it's, less, it's less consistent with what you see down there. Emulation scroll equals win V5. I don't know about that. I would say the, only, um, the closest thing to an auto win on V5 is playing a Redim Null Worshipper because then you can... That's one of those rare situations where I'll do V5 um, before slime usually. 
since you can just kind of have a million allies. Anyway, um, I'm going to call it a night as far as the stream goes. Um, had a good time explaining all this stuff. I think this is a really natural stopping point, uh, considering we have three runes. Next time we'll do Vaults 5, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to demonstrate how a usual game should go if you're playing optimally and you want to, if you just want to win. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do Depths, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do Zot. And um, we're going to basically go clear and go to the orb, but we're not going to pick it up. And I'll explain all that and why later. But basically, we're going to turn this into a 15 rune game so I can show off the extended parts of the game as well and how you would transition into doing that. Um, anyway, that's going to be it for the night. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I really appreciate you watching. Appreciate the subs as well, everybody. Um, but until next time, I am signing out. Did you know that there are many ways that you can help support this channel? Read about them on rosecrypto.com support. At Rose Crypto, you can learn all about cool things like the Brave web browser, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.